Hello, hello, and welcome one, welcome all back to some PSU LCS coverage here on Penn State League, where we are here to bring you guys the fall 2021 Grand Finals for the PSU LCS. Representing both teams, actually, from our Blue Conference is going to be Mitmok's team coming out of the regular season at number two, and then number three, the Universe, heading off as we get on into Draft. Already locked away. Uh, the Universe starting on blue side, taking away Kindred from Mitmok. Generally speaking, target bans are going to go the way of jungle in this instance. Uh, whereas Mitmok's team taking away the Lulu, taking away supportive champions that can be used to buff up Universe Soul, the primary carry for the Universe. It's a battle of the namesakes tonight. <laughs> it does definitely feel like a protect the carry on both teams, where they put all of their resources into one or two players, and then everyone else just sort of plays the supportive champs around that. Maybe not like incredibly supportive like a, a Lulu or Soraka top lane, but maybe a tank top lane, uh, another tank jungle for uh, the universe team. And uh, I think uh, maybe a mid laner like Twisted Fate would be good there with the universe's team as well. Just someone who can get around the map, make plays that doesn't require a lot of, uh, a lot of mechanical skill, a lot of I, want to, I don't want to say thinking, because Twisted Fate obviously does require a lot of thinking. But doesn't Twisted require... Fate is legitimately hard to play, so he's yeah, hard I would think, say yes. The very he's least. a more supportive champion. He doesn't take a lot of resources, I think is the word I'm looking for. Uh, you can put him on someone like uh, ZT Su, who uh, is not expected to win lane into Apto, a Masters player. And he should still be decently helpful in every time. Okay, and it's a first pick Gwen, actually, for the universe. Uh, definitely a bit of an interesting lock-in. Is pretty much guaranteed going top lane, I'd assume. Maybe you can still flex a jungle. I'm not sure exactly how the pre meta has fallen out with her specifically, but is counterable in the meta, and because Kindred, Graves, and Karth of the Bands, you give Mitmok his bread and butter. The Karthus jungle coming in in game one. This is kind of what we want to see, right? We want Mitmok on a carry champion that lets him farm up and get really, really powerful. Charts is really, really good with that. Uh, very interested to see what they combine with it. Especially, ooh, a Jinx. Fantastic. With nice late game damage, good AoE, all that stuff. Jinx, I've always liked Jinx. She's weak uh, early game, but she gets really strong to the late game. Those AoE crits are just bonkers. So we've got some damage coming out here from Mitmok's team, and I really like to see that. Jinx is well doing pretty well in preseason thus far. Lethal Tempo build works extremely well with Kid Excited. So it can get some really big pop-up moments in a lot of these team fight scenarios. And without the lack of enchanters, oh, we're locking yes. in Zillion. Zillion. Oh, it's beautiful. All right, we uh, said this was going to be a game of make big carries, and Zillion is the exact support you want when you've got teams with big carries. He is going to make sure that whoever gets into that fight stays alive, and uh, even champions like Gwen and other anything melee, Zillion yeah. speed gets you in there. Like Zillion, I, I personally really love playing Zillion these days. Uh, plus the the guardian angel that goes down to uh, I think probably close to a 30 second cooldown with the right build on Zillion. Uh, that ability haste coming out of CDR buff is so nice for him since he can just build as much ability haste as he want. Have that guardian angel essentially up with a, a an ultimate hunter, basically as fast as people can die around. Him. I can't confirm it's I've gotten sub 30 seconds with that ultimate and it's yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's definitely... The, yep. Multiple res team fights late game is certainly something to be feared. And we get Twisted Fate coming in for mid -Mox team. Kind of interesting we see it blinded for the mid lane. Um, I mean, yeah, you can technically flex Gwen there, but not really a, any good reason to. And kind of interesting thing we got going here for mid -Mox team so far. Don't necessarily mind the champions that are being picked, but one thing we do have to look at is just when these champions start coming online. Twisted Fate. You're looking at post six roams, normally around an aggressive jungler, whereas you have a Karthus where, yes, this is Mitmox Karthus. This is an incredibly proficient jungler on his debatably best champion. Um, my thing is Mitmox team going into phase two here. They're going to need something to start kicking off fights. They're up against a Zillion, uh, who, while yes, is very good into those dive style comps, generally speaking, Zillion countered by more poke style, you know, the Jace's, the Zoe comps, uh, stuff like that, where you're very non committal on your damage. It's going to be very, very hard to start fights and especially be able to move around the map and start getting stuff 
kind of rolling, get that ball moving for the late game. Uh, when you have a Carthus Jerry Jungle who's not that strong early, can be counterpicked here on B4. You have Jinx in bot lane who, while yes, will scale very well in the mid to late game, has a rough early start, can get bullied out in lane. Uh, and then you have Twisted Fate who is, for the most part, just a pick champion that you usually pair again with an aggressive jungler, with an aggressive uh, top side or bot side of the map that can really make it facilitate these post six roams. And right now we don't have any of that from Mitmox team. So it's kind of just a scaling safe team comp, but if it falls behind, it can really be hard to work their way back into the game. If I can address quickly your, say for the Twisted Fate blind pick, that is the master player going up against the bronze player. And as much as I don't like to sit here and just look at ranks and say, ah, that will win lane, that's a pretty large skill gap. So blind picking something as relatively safe as Twisted Fate is, I think a pretty decent pick into that. Plus it will allow them to rotate around to that Jinx to help her through that early game and hopefully kick her off. But you were talking you wanted to engage champions, and I mean, Blitzcrank starts fights like no one else. Blitzcrank Especially. is a special exception when it comes to Zillion because you pull <laughs> the you pull the champion into your team. It's not you're not diving on the Zillion. It's the it's the reverse. He's, he's an exception to the rule. Same goes with stuff like Lulu. Absolutely, oh. they're going to have a lot of fights on their hands and a oh, Vagar okay. picking this here. Interesting. Uh, hey, you give him a free, you give him a free safe mid lane. Might as well take a mid laner that likes to just keep scaling up, keep giving him time, make sure his early laning phase is as easy as possible, and then really explode into the mid to late game. Although, uh, info, <laughs> sorry from our informant, the bronze player is not the mid laner. He is the jungler on that J four. Hmm. That they're in the wrong order in the match. <laughs> if it's the uni if it's the universe forward. side, the universe, the the thing that remember with that team is they will never ever be in PSU LCS order because they roll swap all of their players. Curses. Uh, okay. They pre pretty much their goal is they put uni they put the universe they put universe soul wherever he needs to go for the most effect on the map uh, and most effect against the enemy team and then they scramble around whoever else is based on champ pulls. So this team is extremely fluid with the roster, has been fairly successful with it thus far that season again, finished third in the blue conference uh, and has made it all the way through the bracket to finals. So can't neglect the success just yet. Now, I would like to talk about the Tom Ken sorry, I would like to talk about the Tom Kench coming out from Mitmox team. Uh, I think it's a really good top lane pick here just because uh, as great as Blitzcrank is at uh, engaging team fights, he has very little peel once he does his initial combo of a uh, hook punch. Uh, Jinx is going to be left out in the cold with basically just her own self peel and maybe a twisted fate gold card. And I think a, a tanky top laner like Tom Kench, especially with a Devour, is uh, exactly what they need to keep their ADC alive. Yeah, also when you look at pressure from these teams, I'm going to have to give the advantage over to Mitmok, right? Twisted Fate versus Vagar, that's that's fairly even mid, but if you want to get those Q stacks coming out with Vagar, you usually have to kind of go a little slower. So TF can really get pressure if he wants, or at least Vagar to force uh, missing stacks of his passive. Uh, yeah. Meanwhile, Kench into Gwen, I think Kench kind of bullies that matchup if I'm remembering correctly. And then Jinx, of course, against uh, Jin. Even with Zillion helping push lane, I think it'd be very difficult for them to keep the wave where they want it if Jinx wants to push it in. So there's a lot of opportunities here for Mitmox team to move into the jungle and be really, really mean uh, to this Jarvan if he tries to do anything crazy with Karthus. Yep. Top side is certainly somewhere to look at. Yes, you are dealing with a Gwen who is a pretty hard scaling champion. First few levels of the game is very strong with your level 1 E giving you attack speed. It's not as potent as it used to be, uh, but still a pretty good boon up there in top lane. Either way, with the Tom Kench up there, could look to put something together with the Karthus early on if you want to try to go for that early top side invade. I doubt we're going to see too big of a Scuttle contest in terms of Scuttle fighting. Uh, with the first Scuttle Crab nerfs being what they are, uh, you're just not getting the same value out of that it used to. So I'm not expecting in the early game flip benefiting Mitmok in this case as the Karthus is forced into an early game engagement or an early game deficit that he has to like just accrue by nature of not being able to 1v1 early on. Priority even lane is definitely going to be important here as we get moving. Uh, if you have priority in mid lane for Mitmox team, you have a very, very good way to roam around the map. You have the Twisted Fate Global Ultimate. You can shove it in the Vagar, make sure he can't rotate down. Bot lane has pressure. Again, card this can swing down through there. Apply pressure with Blitzcrank. Look for these dive plays uh, from afar with your Jinx range, with your Karthus Qs, giving you that extra um, range advantage to be able to pull these things off very effectively. Again, Blitzcrank to threaten with positioning and then top side as well. Tom Kench, very playable lane into the Gwen. Should be completely happy. 
Uh, getting that one through, and again, you send Twisted Fate up there once, you send Karthus up there once early game, and it becomes a little bit tricky for the universe to pull off. Now, if the universe is the one getting prior, you have that prior mid once Vagar starts getting levels into his W, especially, and getting that, a lot of that wave clear. Uh, to be able to shove in mid lane, make sure you kind of pin that TF under tower. Uh, that is definitely a possibility where you do have a little bit of an issue for mid because you can't really free up that global usage uh, without losing like a lot of CS, a lot of XP. And then in bot lane, Jin Zillion, again, if they get pushed off wave, if they get pressured off by the Jigs, by the Blitzcrank, you have a very hard time farming the wave. You can't really walk up. The Blitzcrank is just going to hook you in and kill you early game, uh, pretty much regardless uh, whether Jinx you consider an early game champion or not. That's just the nature of the CC lock uh, without too much early damage from Jin Zillion. But on the flip side, Jin and Zillion get their prio there for Universe. You get a pretty good poke lane against Jinx Blitzcrank. Blitz can't find hooks over a large wave. Can really do some damage. Another thing I'd like to mention is that the universe's team has uh, the major, major, major advantage in side laning. Uh, Gwen and Vigar both beat out their their laning counterparts in the side lane. Uh, I know that as the game goes on, Gwen just starts to shred Tom Kench once she gets enough points into her Q, does that true damage. And uh, Twisted Fate, while he can be a, a decent side laner, just because of his presence with his ultimate. Uh, one cage from Vigar, uh, mid to late game, and that is a 4v5 scenario for the universe. Uh, it's it's going to be very interesting to see how the, the later game macro plays out, just given these these comps. Because Mitmok's team has the advantage in picking with the Twisted Fate and the Blitzcrank, but if they can't make anything work off of those picks, if the universe can uh, translate their other lanes into an advantage, like let's say uh, Vigar gets picked off bottom lane while side laning. If the universe is uh, Gwen in the top lane and Jin in the mid lane can manage to get like more platings, uh, more towers, it, it, they can really actually turn that into an advantage. Yeah, certainly so. Uh, again, a lot of ways for this, both these play out teams, generally speaking, they have their uh, champions in terms of theme. You kind of get some and there's no real like hard commits to one way or the other. There's no real hard commit wombo combo team fight style going on here. Except for maybe like Vigar or Jarvan being one of them, Zillion, Vigar, Jarvan. However, you want to work that one out. But neither of these teams not really having a super set identity in terms of what they have to do. They have split, put, all teams have split put off options given leads. Uh, then on the flip side, they can also go in team fight just as well. So it's going to be a, a contest of execution on this one. Yeah, the I mean, universe definitely has a lot of engaged potential with that Jarvan, and it does rely heavily on him. Jarvan with a zillion speed up is nothing to like put your nose up at. That's very difficult to stop, especially with the engaged team or the team that uh, Mitmok has. And one thing I'm noticing, number one, is there's a theme of circles coming out of the universe over here. <laughs> Except for Jin, who's nothing but lines. Vagar, Jarvan, Gwen, Zillion, they all like circles. And they're going to put down lots of circles of death that uh, Mitmok's team is going to have to navigate around. But on the other hand, Mitmox team is all about the picks. You got that Jarvan, you got that Blitzcrank, even Kench to some smaller extent. All right, I say Jarvan, Twisted Fate, and Blitzcrank. Those are going to be catches all over the place, so it's really up to the universe to not get caught out by those picks. If they can do that, they're going to have some very, very powerful, big team, just mobility, or movement, I should say, around the map. They can move around the map as a big team, set up what they want, and in this game, that means objectives, and objectives win the game. Yep. Another thing about Mitmox team, uh, Karthus ultimate. Uh, while it is great at picking off stragglers, getting dark harvest stacks for Karthus, and just uh, getting those kills on low health enemies that would have otherwise survived, uh, it's also a major team fighting tool uh, because if both teams know that a dragon's going to be up soon, both are posturing at Drake, Karthus can, Karthus can press R before the team fight even begins, and they have such a massive advantage because late game Karthus, with the level 16 ultimate, with his items, uh, can pretty much take Zillion down to, to below half health. Same with Vigar and Jin. Uh, Gwen can obviously put up her, her circle and survive it, and Jarvan the Fourth should be building moderately tanky anyway, but that Karth Assault before a team fight is really going to be damaging. Yep, and just some interesting rune choices here. We got this is going to be the Predator TF, so sticking with that current mid lane theme of if it can take Predator, you just take Predator. Uh, that <laughs> seems to be just how it goes right now. Uh, interestingly enough, the Vagar is looking for Electrocute over Predator Vagar, which is a favorite. Pretty much impossible to miss your cage uh, when you run that summoner. Or not summoner, rune, I guess. But 
Alas, we're going for the more damage-centric build here on the Vigor. Possibly looking for some better early game, better laning stats. We'll have to see. It does look like someone forgot to turn on the light switch on Summoner's Rift as of now, but... Uh... You're going to have to move the... Uh, <laughs> our, our Observer, if he moves the time up to... In the time works, it's just not started for him. Production's getting there. Dang, Dom, you're a wizard, I tell you. <laughs> Almost like I do this a lot. It sounds like you've done it too much. <laughs> Probably. Oh, the duck! Yep. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, I I still love Important when the duck casting appears. Information. Uh, Mitmox team could go for that level 1 invade. They do have a Blitzcrank, obviously. <laughs> uh, but it looks like both teams are just going to stay in the safety of their own jungle to start off with. Yeah, I think a little slow on the decision making there for Mint Mox team didn't come out necessarily, I think, with a set game plan of where they wanted to go. They looked like they were going to try to go and just hard force down by Raptors, try to get some early vision in, possibly, with the Blitzcrank pushing up, and then maybe looking to go for Tri Brush, and didn't really decide on much in the end. Uh, however, it will be bot side starts here for both these junglers, so Jarvan and Karthus should be meeting up around this top side in the early game. And again, this is one of those lanes where you can't get swinging if the league Gwen gets a lot of uh, levels in early, a lot of gold in, uh, injection in that top side over the Tom Kench. It does become harder for Block Job to play the game. Uh, you get a much bigger advantage for Universe Soul, but on the flip side of that, if Block Job starts getting a bunch of kills, starts getting a hefty lead, Tom Kench from ahead is just an incredibly impressive champion. So we'll have to see what these junglers decide to do, because again, I'm not super expecting a very hardcore scuttle contest with the new changes. Uh, I think I'm... Karthus. Oh, sorry. No, go ahead, man. Uh, I think Karthus can full clear here, recall, and then just immediately sprint for the bottom side scuttle. Uh, but I don't think that scuttle crab is going to be the objective to worry about top side. I think it's going to be the top laners. Uh, I think that Jarvan the fourth should be doing either a five camp or a, a four camp clear here. Ooh, you could hook on attack. He has to burn the flash with ignite coming down. So very respectful there by the Zillion, popping some pots as well. Try to sustain some of that damage now, but big summoner spell advantage here for Universe Botlane, despite not getting the level two tick just in early. Just to say that though, we're going for b double bomb. Tacky Pumice has to try to navigate around. The exhaust comes out into only plays trees, who is getting slowly taken down. But first blood does go over to Lucianal, trying to DPS down six nine tree lovers. The predator comes in from the TF. With boot start, but will not be able to find a second kill. Either way, Mitmok bot lane, they grab three summoner spells from the enemy for two of their own, plus the 450 gold. Yeah, if you just look right now in the jungle as well, it's like we said, bottom to top, Karthus, J4. If Karthus does want to get the recall off, he's actually going to be in a fantastic position, like you were saying, because number one, the bottom lane had to pay a ward tax to Blitzcrank during their level one. They didn't necessarily have to, but they elected to. Number two, that wave just hit that turret. They could make that come out if they wanted to, get some good, you know, freeze in front of the turret and set up for a Mitmok gank, uh, but I don't uh, know if they're going to be doing that. Zillion with no flash is uh, just a sitting duck. I mean, even with a, uh, a weak ganker like Karthus, if they, if um, they got 69 Tree Lover and Tacky Pumas don't have vision in that river brush, a gank could just kill Zillion. Uh, the Karthus wall slow into a uh, Blitzcrank pull could just mean, like, uh, laning phase is over for the universe's team. Uh, Indeed. Again, this is one of those lanes, bot and top. One side starts getting advantage, one side starts getting lane priority. You can really start swinging how the game, or sorry, mid, not top. How the game is played is gank mid. Apto decides steps away from the cage as money killer. Flashes away after responds with one in kind, and they are going to grab another kill mid lane. So two to zero for Mitmox team, starting to build up that early game gold lead. You don't want to give Karthus and Jinx the gold lead, but unfortunately, that is what has started to happen. Uh, Karthus is farming up as every Karthus loves to do. Uh, currently, only one camp ahead of Jarvan the Fourth, but he has the entire jungle to clear from bottom to top again after this. After this wave clear, should be able to go up and grab some. And yeah, I think a little bit of mispositioning there for Money Killer was a little bit too far up in lane. Uh, without Vision, was playing toward bottom block as well, so very easy for Mitmox to walk in there. Uh, post a go gold card and get a wall of pain, some damage down, and eventually the kill. 
With first dragon spawning here in just a few seconds. Have to see if any teams want to take an early shot at an objective, start getting that soul stacking bonus. Because it is currently a wind dragon. Still that coveted chemtech soul on the board. I don't think the, the chemtech and the hextech soul are still uh, at increased rates. Oh. Oh. Tact Pumas ignited once again, but the W misses from Lucianel with that. Means the Zillion gets a speed boost himself away. One more skill shot might have been the doom for Tacky Pumice. Though 6 entry Lever, no mana. Predator TF coming in. You don't need the destiny when you have Predator, I guess. His only place three stuck under the turret here. Teleport coming in from Universe trying to ward off this dive attempt. Apto now in trouble. Has a gold card. Managed to greet inside of the Sacred Mist. But there's three men caught on the side, and Universe still gonna pick up two immediately on low up targets. Mitmok flashes into the enemy AD carry, trying to find one more Q, but he ain't got the mana. Six down, Sheila picks up that one, no problemo. Apto now running back to the security of his turret, picked up with the flag of Demacia. And that is two grabbing a kill of his own, and all of a sudden. Four quick kills from the universe, including two on their carry top laner. That was just a really, really good response coming out of the universe there. You can see even universe soul jumping down there with teleport. Meanwhile, block job didn't even bother to show up. He is getting two plates to compensate, and the yep. gold is pretty even. But when you look at how the kills go, that's 2-0-2 oh, going up there on that Gwen. That Kench is going to be potentially in a bit of trouble if that Gwen is able to use that gold advantage to push her into that spot where she does start out damaging and winning the matchup against Kench. But just generally, beautiful, beautiful collapse. Speaking of collapse, though, yep. that is a catch Predator onto again. that Zillion. Down he goes. Gold card, you're dead. Thank you, man. Yep. He is gone. Nothing much else there. Yeah. Uh, they weren't even looking for the Zillion. They were just looking for uh, an invade on the second spawn red buff. You know, but that, that all's well that ends. All's well that ends well. All's well that ends well. well Just take a second look at the vision though. In this game. bottom side jungle, that's three wards from red, and there's only a blue ward near the like Grom or ooh. As I say that though, here comes the twisted fate gank. He finally has yep. ultimate lands a gold card here on a Jin. Will he go down? He's still surviving. Cartus ult coming out. Oh, just barely surviving. A last hit from Apto finishes him off. Another perfectly executed dive coming out of the universe, or maybe not. They're gonna make me eat my words here. Heal coming out of Lucianal, and Apto looks like he'll be getting away. Amazing Does play. Does manage to skirt himself right. out of there. Meanwhile, Mitmok uh, presses R and continues on farming. This is a very, <laughs> no, I mean, this is exactly what he's supposed to be doing. This is the, the perfect Karthus, perfect Karthus gameplay. Uh, the more farm he has, the better he can press R. That is, that is, that is what optimal is gameplay looks yeah. like. This is, uh, unironically, what optimal Karthus gameplay looks like. <laughs> it, if you aren't farming wolves on spawn, you're playing him wrong. Uh, looks like there might be a gank coming out on the top side here as Bokjob is... He does have a wave pushing into uh, Universe Soul's tower. But it yeah, W's out. All good. <laughs> he, he can it's a tank with, it's tank with mobility. It's you know it's yeah. how the how it's played. So opportunity for Universe Soul to try to get some just make him uncomfortable up there. Knows Jarvan's still possibly topside, so still needs to be a little bit careful with the vision they have. Well, and so far, ooh, I hope this isn't a catch that's gonna break my. My little pontification here. But well, so far, uh, top side, we got an expected. invade. It's not going to be collapsed on. Okay, yeah, cool. I can talk. <laughs> <laughs> no, so so far, we've been seeing it, though. The universe has been winning. They won that really big, albeit messy, team fight there in the bottom lane. But all these other kills that have been coming out here for Mitmox team have been picks, which is just what both teams are It's exemplifying what both teams are wanting there. And a lot of them have been coming out of Apto, but that's just what we've been expecting. And Really, I want to see Universal's like the universe tighten up their gameplay just a little bit and play a little bit more intelligently, a little more safely, get some more better vision down where they can avoid these picks a little bit, a little bit better. Yeah, it's I mean, one way you can lot. look to prevent that is always if you have if you're dealing with a global and you don't really know what you're doing except for possible dive here. Mitmok probably gonna pop the herald down here at least get a few plates. Apto skirting out between some skill shots with the predator move speed. Mitmok not gonna pop the herald. 
Still has a lot of time on, so doesn't have to do it just yet. Maybe think there's a bigger collapse coming through, so we'll actually stick around for the wave and now probably pop that Herald. As bot lane was rotating up, sees Universal going back up toward this top side. Make sure Block Job can't get any more plates. Uh, and mid lane tower will be the target. And they might just get, yeah, they're more than likely just gonna get the whole darn tower with this one as Money Killer forced to get back. No TP available and Jungler nowhere to be found for the cover. And that's gonna be first turret over to Mitmox team very early on, 10 minute first turret. And now, if you've heard me cast before, you know I'm a, a huge proponent proponent of opening up the map by getting that early mid lane tower uh it, it just makes especially with a, a predator twisted fate mid lane it, it just makes roaming around the map invading the jungle uh and then just punishing the other team so much easier on every single play they make uh just because of that little bit of extra uh roaming space yep and uh and again this is one of the things i was talking about before we started having the slew of invade uh, attempts as well as the Herald play is one way you attack you deal with globals is you go out and attack the global lane If you have a Shen top lane, you take your resources top you gank the Shen. Uh, he can't ult himself Same with this with Fate. The Destiny is not an issue for a numbers advantage possibility if you are ganking the Twisted Fate So these are like certain options that you have to deal with globals. It's not really been the universe's target I don't think Sue has been around the mid lane whatsoever so far on this Jarvan pick has just been kind of farming it up uh, as best he can. It looks like possibly attempting to contest this dragon. Not really a ton of vision here. Block for job, the blue side. Block, block job does have teleport up, and the universe souls teleport is just barely down. So we might see a double teleport uh, coming down here for this Drake fight if blue team decides to contest. Possible. They're just kind of quad stacking the wall here. Finally, the curtain call comes out from 693 level, trying to ward away. Most to Mitmox team, but they're gonna hold this Drake at 500 and start bursting it down now. Down to 1,000. Does get it with the smite at 158, so a little bit on the later side. Now can they get away? Money Killer having to pass away. Destiny finally coming out. Great hook from only place trees to bring it back as Gold Card lands to Tacky Pumice. There's the Abyssal Voyage from Block Job, and the rest of the universe is left to scatter. In the wake of superior numbers huddled under their bot lane tier one. That's gonna be Dragon and a few kills to boot. Mint Mox team once again gains a significant 3k lead. Yeah, and this is not what you want to necessarily see. This arcane map or arcane hex tech, I'm sorry. Hex tech dragon map coming out here with these hex gates. This is really, really good, I in my opinion, for teams that like to be big team fighting teams because it just allows you to contest the dragon from whichever side and baron whichever side you want it's actually really really scary but uh what do i know i guess right <laughs> <laughs> they are a pick cop as well so either hex tech or chem tech would have been great souls for them oh chem tech uh, would have been nasty yep. Chem tech would have been absolutely disgusting with the blitz crack but <laughs> or another, yeah of course another failed gank attempt bot lane here for two I uh, got spotted out on that ward there over the wall, uh, and thusly Mitmok takes the entirety of his top side jungle camp, so the hard farming Jarvan will no longer be farming whatsoever uh, as he goes up towards that top side might look towards the top lane. Walk job quite overextended. Uh, also has the support of Tacky Pumice up in that direction, so could look for a play top side here, but with four men committed to that side of the map, a bit interesting as we still have a 1 minute 57 for the Herald. So any stealth wards they place going to despawn before that objective actually comes on the map. Now Mitmok did uh, make use of that opened up map to take that top side. If you saw what he uh, did moving around the map, he took the dragon, invaded the bottom side, crossed through mid lane, took the entire wave, and then took ZT Su's entire top side. Which, <laughs> um, if you if you're against a hard farming jungler like Karthus and you walk into your top side and everything is missing. That is the nightmare scenario. That is uh, horrifying. Fortunately, Karthus still only has the loot and Zeko as a major item. He does have sword boots to help him get through that inherent magic resist every champion has, but yeah, you don't like to see that 125 number next to him when the Jarvan is sitting here with 70. And arguably, Karthus has had even a better map presence than Jarvan just based on their score alone, although apparently Karthus has died once. Uh, but that's that turret goes down. Jinx tries to maybe look for something with that, but that would have been devastating for her. So good thing yeah. she didn't attempt that. Yep. Uh, Car as Car Visionless overextensions are generally not recommended. <laughs> Gangs still might come off though, as Money Killer does get a speed boost. 
Maybe regretting not taking that predator for the extra move speed on that one. Might be able to find a cage on the only plays. Yeah, we've seen predator use a great effect from Apto this game. I know we're kind of changing targets here, but we were saying earlier that he wasn't being ganked very hard. It's really hard to gank somebody when they're leaving lane on predator's cooldown and heading to your bottom lane over and over again. Uh, especially because the universe's vision control just wasn't strong enough for them to know exactly where. That's what the fate was, but while I'm saying that, Mi'kmaq is getting caught here by Universal, yep. but it doesn't matter. He pushed W and That's stood on you. <laughs> a lot of missed skill shots there from Universal. <laughs> uh, misses first off Brock, Q goes wide. It's good footwork from Mi'kmaq, but a little bit of a misplay on the kill attempt. Now, meanwhile, Gold Card does land. Mm. Money killer, though, Ooh, has a zillion ulti, but Tacky Pumice might have wanted to use it on his own, All right. Walk job, flashing forward, grabs the resurrection as Apto finds two in the back line. Money killer does find one with the ultimate in trade, but in essence, everything going the way of Mitmok's team thus far put themselves up at a nice, pretty 6,800 gold in the green. That was yeah, and that, that Jinx ultimate, I must have been watching very closely because I did not think. The tacky pumice was that low, but she picked up the kill there. More gold in the hyper carry's pocket. Very bad. And just a general good chain of like picks, I would guess I would call that. It was kind of a weird yeah. fight coming out of Mitmox team. And they are in a pretty comfortable lead now after that. Very scary getting the second Rift Herald. More money in their pocket. Not as important as the first one, granted. Yeah, this is going to be the one that they use to more than likely either get sideline pressure with toppling turret. Uh, is more than a likely fact. Maybe even bot lane turret if they want to try to pressure Baron earlier on. Or they use it to break the inhibitor mid once you hit 20 minutes and then look for a Baron or an objective play. Is, like, the, pretty much the option you use it for. Because, again, you're not going to use second Herald for any gold inflection at this point unless you're going for those tier 2 top lanes. That's pretty much all you've got. Uh, though this dragon, currently under the possession of Universal, Mitmok more... Concentrated on his wolves. So this one's gonna go down to around 4k. They finally spot out with the Spurk Scryer's Bloom. So you in the pit. Gage comes down, trying to ward him off, and it's claimed by Universal by some method. The resurrection comes through on a two, but doesn't really matter. Mitmok team will grab the kill and recompense for the lost OBJ. And a little bit of highway robbery from Universal. Very well done with the reset timers to exploit such from Mitmok. Only place two though. Walking into a stun cage. Grabs the hook onto the Zillion. Into the Fed Jinx. Has to flash away as Gwen is now here. Lucian though still grabs the kill. Only place tree. Trying to kite away from Universal. Does so successfully. The Ignite claims in the kill to boot as Apto. Maybe looking for 69 tree level though it's a little hard with his situation under the tier 2 bot lane turret. Can't find anything yet. W gonna go wide. Finally, the gold card lands. That's a lot of damage. Apto claims that one as shut down for Suyu onto Mitmok. Mitmok, though, with the Beyond the Grave kill, secures it. Now that will be mid lane inhibitor turret, bot lane tier 2 turret. A 10,000 gold lead almost here at 18 minutes in. And this is just an absolute slaughter of a game one in favor of Mitmok's team. Mitmok is at more than double the CS of ZT Su. Uh, <laughs> extremely unfortunate for Universal's team, but that's just the way it is with Karthus. Walk job managing to save yep, all good the devour. Foods. Beautiful. Universal oh, was oh, looking forward, of course, and have the needle work up because of the uh, ulti in the last team fight. So, not low enough cooldown. You need, like, rank, I think it's three to, for that to really get to low cooldowns, where you're just kind of using it every single time you fight. As now Destiny coming in looking for picks mid, gets a stun onto the Vagar, but that's a lot of damage coming back through. Did make a death rocket misses his money killer has the GAE. Grabs the kill as well, but is stuck under the enemy turret, so there's gonna be a response here for the universe as they grab another shutdown onto Apto. Needlework doing some damage from Universe Soul, but Blockjob is a very tanky boy, 3-0, and and ends up being a relatively favorable exchange here for the universe as they only lose one, grab two, including shutdown gold. Now you heard my, I'm sure you, you could not have heard, missed my insane gasp there because I could not believe that, that Zillion Ultimate was still active after he got pulled into the turret. It didn't necessarily matter, but it was really, really good job there for Money Killer to get that Primordial Burst down onto the Blitzcrank and at least pick up a bit of money before he went down. Some really good play coming out there. And one thing I do want to mention is that uh, with their insane lead, oh, another fight's breaking. 
Wow. Yep, yeah, just getting oh pretty God. much annihilated here. <laughs> uh, I got my entire client froze, so we're catching back up. Oh, Double sorry, kill man. over to the Carthus. There's another one for Money Killer for the shutdown. But and I guess we'll like here. Yeah, give yeah, me go ahead, man. Good, good, good job, Riot client. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> but I was going to say before, another random fight in the jungle broke out was uh, that Midmox team has an incredibly fast Baron take just because Carthus, uh, who is fed, puts out an insane amount of just constant DPS as long as he's landing Qs, and with a stationary target like Baron, it's kind of difficult to miss them. I would not put it past myself, but uh, I'm assuming that Mimak would hit every single one. Now, uh, they also have um, Lucian on Jinx, who uh, is another DPS AD carry. Uh, unlike an AD carry like maybe Jin, who puts out bursts of damage, uh, Jinx just constantly wears down that Baron. So, if yeah. Mimak can manage to... Uh, Oh, the Rift Herald is, is gone now, but uh... Yep. <laughs> Taken away there. Taken away. Uh, if Mitmok had managed to put down the Rift Herald mid and as just maybe a diversion and then sprinted to Baron, they could have maybe snuck it or at the very least forced in a, a favorable fight. Yeah, especially with Kraken Slayer. Jinx with that 10% right now bonus AD attack speed coming out of that Kraken Slayer. She is going to be putting out just oodles of damage. It's nasty, especially against objectives like that. Speaking of objectives, though, we have less than a minute coming here for our second Hextech Dragon. Yes, Hextech. So that's going to be another objective that we're going to want to see, although I don't know if the game's going to last all the way to a Dragon Soul at this point, not without the universe yeah, being is... a major contender. I mean, they have closed under 10k. You've gotten back down under to 7 now, so that is significant progress in the right direction. Again, you do get picked, you get the shutdowns, and a lot of that gold starts coming back into your pockets, especially with the new objective bounty system. If you can get some of these outer turrets down, uh, you still got mid lane tier one, top lane tier one. If you can get that side lane pressure going, but it is a very long, arduous road back. The only thing the universe really has going, as, as you said, is these dragon souls. It's good hook over the wall onto Suyu Apto, though. Looking for the gold card, can't find it just yet, is a pretty good flag and drag out of range. And with the dragon spawning up here, should be secured pretty much for free by Mitmox team. Yeah, we'll see if does have to steal. He does have that teleport yep. up Universal, doesn't. Should just go over to red team. Now we haven't mentioned it yet, but the objective bounties are active and have been for some time for Universal. In fact, or the Universe, sorry, I keep calling it Universal. In fact, it's been up for a while, and I think that's a big reason why they are under the 10k gold deficit, because they have secured at least one objective, I think two. Ooh, oh, they cut you out there is Destiny. Doesn't look like it'll hit, but Mitmok on the flank. Finds a wall of pain. Good Strelia's though. Keep on try to get him away. Requiem. Burns the Zillion ulti regardless, but with that many members backing off and that many little health bars, looks like it's gonna be Mitmok's call to go for the big purple worm. And again, that is the power of Karthus ultimate. Like I said, uh, even if the entire enemy team was full health, uh, Karthus pressing R on his keyboard is enough to get them back off and uh, give the Baron over to Mitmox team. Yeah, and now once again approaching that 10k or a 9 and some change here for Mitmox team. Dragons though, even stacked, so still gonna be waiting another 10 minutes for anyone to have a shot at Soul. And despite the relative early game advantages, kind of gonna be a slow burner here. We'll have to see what Mitmox team can do for Baron again. Still that top lane here too, you gotta get down, but otherwise. Sieging the base, the next objective, and how these team fights have been going, playing around the Jarvan, playing around the Vagar, getting a little bit tricky for uh, some of the players. App though, especially, can't just run in with Predator on these champs, so if we have to play it a little bit more safe, a little bit more controlled play, possibly get uh, split lanes and the like. Yeah, I, I do see two ex exposed inhibitor turrets here coming for out for the universe. Those are going to be the major targets, I'd imagine, for Mitmox team, and you can see TF sitting there in the bottom lane trying to get in there. He doesn't have very good ward coverage, though, so it is dangerous for him to be there for too long if, like Jarvan, for example, disappear. And you can see him now actually dropping a ward there for some protection, and I think that they're going to maybe look for this outer or inner top side turret instead. Now, like I said uh, during draft, um, the Universe's team does have the better side lane. Uh, I did see Tom Kench not really wanting to fight Universe Soul, even with the advantages that he has. Uh, and obviously, Twisted Fate versus Vigar, one Vigar R, Twisted Fate is basically gone. So I yep, but Money Killer might also. Yep, just. 
That is a Deathcap Majaya's Karthus, and you, sir, are a squishy, squishy mid lane mage. Uh, two Qs is all it neat takes, apparently. No Requiem for the dead. Now, Jinx excited. Moss be looking for a pick with the Destiny here. So you going in, but it's only going to find the Cataclysm onto Mitmok. Gets the resurrection. Mitmok immediately can go into the Zonny's Hourglass to buy more time. Universal, meanwhile, trying on the back line. Blitzcrank doing a very good job peeling off as the Requiem comes down. Find some low HUD bars, but Super Mega Death Rocket can't really send anyone back to the fountain on the express train, and they will just have to settle for the inhibitor and inhibitor turret for now. Possibly might look to push for the second inhibitor. Lucianol excited. Blitzrank can't find the hook. Good immunity on the gold card. Blitzrank down. Jarvan back up and in as Mitmok is under predation. Universal flashes forward. Find the shutdown. Big Arcade finds two. That's a lot of damage. And Universe might be turning this one around. Double kill over the Decimate. Money Killer doing all the damage he can possibly can, but this top catch is just too freaking tanky. He stumbles into a cage, which is the only saving grace for Pumice and 69 Tree Lover, but Lucianol and Block Job should be able to get the done here for Mitmok's team. Universe Soul played absolutely out of his mind during that fight there. Oh, yeah. Almost putting the team on the back. Granted, there is team fights or teamwork behind that. I don't want to downplay any of that. But amazing positioning, amazing damage coming out of Universe Soul. But despite all the kills, and I think there were two shutdowns in there, they're still down 10k gold, and they still have <laughs> two broken inhibitors. This is not looking good, but they did manage to hold on. Maybe they can fight over this dragon. Maybe they can get some good circles down and win the fight or two. But it's not looking, not looking good. <laughs> it is. We, we are at the point where you start considering, like, hey, this is the death. This is the death this of the uh, death. of teams gold leads. Where you start getting the, the situations where wallet dip is just too much. Where you can look at tab, you can see, okay, this guy's a whole item up over this guy. This guy's got a whole item up over this guy. You start getting legitimate full item, three quarter item advantages on a lot of these champions, and every single position saves support. Uh, you really start to have a hard time fighting in this team cup again, especially with the scaling aspects. Jinx is well and truly online, has been for a while. Karth is well and truly online. The Tom Kench isn't really even scaling pick, but got ahead enough in the early game where it didn't matter. Uh, and he's being relevant as Destiny comes out. Spots out Universe Soul here, but the pick is actually in mid lane. Good stun cage to buy more time as Apto has to go into Zanya's. Meanwhile, top side Universe Soul in a duel of his own. Good job away from block job there as he pops the needlework. Possible rechase here by Universe as Super Mega probably barely doesn't finish off Money Killer. Walk job, meanwhile, looking for some Seamstress Prey. Lucianol looking for Universe Soul, but does get into his W, so does survive for quite a while. Finally, only plays trees, takes him out as the rest of the team retreats into base. Requiem, though, 69 Tree Lover. Bye bye. You're getting the express trip back to the fountain. You'll get your heals in around 42 seconds' time. Good stun. Flash by only place trees. Hits a minion. Gold card though. Lands true. Block job as well. With the W. Bitmok kind of just uh, getting good in there. Buying space for his team we'll say. As he will secure their team. The Nexus turn. Secure their team. The final few kills. And secure a 1-0 advantage. In this best of five series. He was utilizing Karthus' passive, I think, is the, the way that you want to put that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll use the passive, of course. Why play a champion if you never use the passive, right? Mm -hmm. Yep, and uh, the damage graphs tell all. As a little bit of a rough show in there from Universe. In terms of uh, total damage, whereas uh, Mitmok boarding 2k plus over any other player in the game. Or, sorry, two times uh, any other player in the game's damage with 32k. Mm -hmm. So quite in a performance from him on the card. This again, to be expected, this is one of his classic champions that's banned in nearly all of their games. <laughs> nearly. Yeah, yeah. One is all you need. Outliers, the quote, including this one. And we're going to head over to break. So we'll catch you guys back here in a few minutes.
All right, hello and welcome back to the PSU LCS Fall 2021 Finals between Mip Mox team and the Universe. We are already in Game 2 Drafts, so we're going to head over to that screen here real quick. Um, so far, Universe electing to go blue side yet again after a Game 1 loss to Mip Mox team in pretty hard fashion. This time, banning away the Twisted Fate, the Karthus, and the Kindred, leaving up the Graves and the Kha'Zix. And Mitmok gonna keep the same bands. Irelia for the Universal Target, Ziggs as well as Lulu, and it's gonna be a Tom Kench first pick for the Universe. I do like how they banned Twisted Fate and Karthus after losing to them so handily in round one. That is a pure, no, we're not doing this again, uh, ban button. Uh, it is yeah, very interesting we see um, Tom Kench blinded like this. Uh, it does have some flexibility still, you can put it uh, Fasting Senna still does exist. It's not very common, but you could yeah. technically do it still. Otherwise, is a blind pick top lane kind of strange. Yes, that is strong laning, but it's not unbeatable. Um, there are champions that can play to it. Mordekaiser is like a skill-based matchup, although favoring Tom Kench uh, in most events. Th there are matchups that can be played into the Thomas. Yeah, the Thomas Kench. Uh, Galio mid lane. That's another uh, utility pick for Apto. First the Tom, uh, first the Twisted Fate, now the Galio, and uh, I think it's they're really good picks with uh, Mitmok style playing. Just because Mitmok is a jungler that relies on his team to get him through the early game, and then absolutely crushes it late game. Uh, I think Galio is a really nice pick here. I don't know why he relies on his team in every early game. He's he not, plays, I, I don't he mean relies on. This. I don't he plays guard this, my guy. <laughs> He heavily I, appreciates a team that can take care of itself. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I don't care. I don't care about. Shut up about Mimok. We have a Master E lock in an actual PSG LCS Finals. <laughs> shut up about Mimok. We don't care anymore. Master Yi is on the table. Last time we saw Master Yi uh, in a PSU LCS stream game was, I believe, Fall 2020, actually, which was Mr. Lazy 519 pulling it out in the semi finals, I believe. Uh, and absolutely popping off for one game. Yeah, it was Mr. Lazy's team versus the Sinners as production is putting in my ear. <laughs> now, I will say that a Penn State LCS streamed game, not on the official channel, has had a Master Yi this season. I know because I lost to it. This <laughs> very good, very good, <laughs> very good. It was running it it's... down versus someone, I know that. <laughs> yeah, we got we got put in our place with that Master Yi, but that's a turn to mid. mid. I think. I, is it, it could be Galaxy. It could be still mid. top it, it's, one it's as well. It, it could be it's flat. looking like it's Tom Kench support as well. It's looking like this is going to be a fast extent of Tom Kench. Like lane. a son of Kench bot lane. Interesting idea. Which, again, not really sure on the drafting strategy. If you want to flex the Tom Kench, you save center for four. Uh, no, many people are going to ban out the Senna if, when they see the face of Tom. They're probably just going to assume it's going top lane at this point in the meta. So, a little bit interesting drafting from the universe. Yeah, just... both games are very flexible. I like that Jinx ban. Oh, yeah, Jinx ban don't, is don't actually it. very surprising yeah. that it fell that far down in the draft. But there's the vein to follow up, because why not, right? Vein is <laughs> very um, that's right now. way... Senna... That's a bad matchup for Vayne. You know? Oh, fairly yeah. certain. That is terrible. If I may, though, I'm not noticing a Graves delivery device, but there also isn't a support pick for Mintmox team, so I would like to see something like a Leona. Could be support here. Galio that can flex it. Could also be a support Galio, that's fair. But there's still not a horrible to Tom Kench, I don't think so it's great. Yep. I mean, and they still have plenty of options. Ooh, Malzahar. Ooh. I like that. Yep, just going for a neutralizing mid lane. No, my Extra question is... DC. Who is playing the Master Yi? Because as we said before, the universe's team is incredibly flexible in terms of roles and picks. Uh, we'll and see. Master Yi is uh, known for being a noob champion. So anyone could potentially play him right now. Yeah, again, we'll have to see uh, where that one falls. Still looking for probably going to be a top lane pick here on B5. Unless they're going to keep the top catch up. Nope, mm -hmm. yep, it's going to be top lane Malphite. So you are going to get that counter pick into the Trindamir. Except they're going to flex the Trinomir mid lane, yep, and just go with the Mordekaiser. So, now you have the interesting situation. You could possibly put the Malzahar up against the Mordekaiser if your universe just flex, flex up where uh, your positionings are and make sure your Malphite's always matching Trindomir. Uh, is one strategy you can certainly try. You can always put the Malzahar into the Trindomir and just pray to God your Malphite can survive laning phase. 
and instead of Tom Ken's bot lane, I mean, you have some tanky elements. You have the Malphite, you have the Tom Ken's as your frontliners that are pretty solid. Uh, but looking over at Mimmox team, besides a Galio Taunt and really Condemn, not too much CC available for these guys to really yeah. deal with a Master Yi. Uh, now, I don't know how much I like the Mordekaiser pick. Obviously, it's a good counter pick in a Malphite because Mordekaiser just does magic damage and Malphite likes to. Oh, uh, they need it because they want an AP. They need an AP topside. I'm aware, but like, it's. <laughs> no, no, this is. Uh, I mean, um, Mordekaiser is like uh, not a bad pick here, but I don't like how his ultimate interacts with most people in the universe. Like, Santa, obviously, you can ult at any point and just kill her because she's the attack damage carry. But uh, I don't know how much I like ulting Malphite because at best you just hold off his ultimate on your team for another seven seconds, which can be useful, but it's not ideal. Uh, I don't like ulting the Tom Kench because it's not that impactful. And ulting Malzahar is just, he ults you back, and just cancel each other out. Uh, ulting Maskey, I mean, depending on the game time, is just a death sentence for Mordekaiser. <laughs> so I don't know. I, it, it feels like Mordekaiser is less of a... Less of a great pick, more of a good pick. Now, I mean, I definitely think it's just mostly for the AP injection. Is what you're looking now, at. It's easy to play top laner. Uh, you can you have multiple build paths for it. You can go full AP. Go for the tankier frontline build, which might be what we see here with their current composition. Is go with like, the um, not ice spawn gauntlet. That's not the item anymore. Frostfire. Frostfire gauntlet. Thank you. Now here is something that I know just because of the chair uh, the, camp the champions that I play. Trindemir mid lane has the single best. Uh, synergy with a top laner out of every single other character in the roster it's a top laner that gives ap a top laner that can go tanky a top laner that has that engage that trindamir needs and he has the 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 cc that trindamir needs to keep people in place while he whacks it it is singed i believe that singed <laughs> in this game would be the single greatest factor against the universe that is what i really would have liked to see now there because is one small problem with your idea there it's that yes. it takes a very depraved mind to play <laughs> singed very well so there's yeah, an odd cool. chance that block job is not deranged enough to play the madman it is or definitely a pick that you need to uh you need to learn over time but I think it's, it's a pick it's a pick possible. which learning curve while yes rewarding at the higher end levels is not worth actually getting it there for the most part I, I uh, there's easier curves that have higher skill ceilings as well so Singed actually has one of the highest uh, champion mastery curves. He's up there with Yumi and Udyr, and I am not joking about any of those three champions. That is a legitimate statistic that a writer has put out. They have well. also mentioned that the better you get at Singed, the worse you get at literally every other champion of the game. <laughs> so that is, it's an investment for sure, but it's worth it to be able to synergize with Trindamir mid. It's probably because you have to chop the brain of your, the part of your brain that says this is how you play League of Legends. You have to cut that out, play Singe, and just like throw it in the trash. <laughs> like, Singe oh. just doesn't care how you play League of Legends. <laughs> Singe plays Singe. This is true. Uh, but yes, it looks like the the Master Yi is going over to Universe Soul. Yeah, that, again, that's that's to be expected. You're gonna you're yeah. gonna put your best player on the hyper carry, pop off pick, possibly looking after the game one scenario to have a better idea of how to deal with mitmock in terms of pathing i mean that's just the thing that's experience once you get to a point in the game as long as you aren't like a turbo one trick you generally have an idea of how the other roles play uh universal has played many roles in his time in psu lcs so we'll have to see how he does in the jungle on the master yi is certainly a bit of a new one we don't see it too terribly often and certainly could be exploited early mitmock i mean this guy this is a guy with the knowledge with a game plan can just put you under as a jungler. Otherwise though, going to need to see some pretty big performances out of a lot of these players. Yes, you have a lot of kill threat over on to Mitmox team. You have a Trinimir, you have a Vayne, you have a Graves, which all do these super, super huge amounts of burst damages, as well as being able to consistently DPS you down over time, even as tanks. Uh, but all these champions, very short ranged. Senna, as this game goes on, going to be getting more and more value before that extra range she brings, as well as the slows. All right, before we get into the match, does Trindamir have Predator or no? I think yes. I can't oh, wait, see we yet. Oh, wait, we have three-minute delay. 
Yeah. No, well, yeah, I'm, I'm asking for a, I'm asking for a commentator. I do we like do we say, think? Uh, I, I don't know. I feel like Lethal Tempo is probably like really broken on him, but I haven't played too much preseason, so oh, I cannot vouch. I, Better, I don't think would be terrible. If I can make my prediction, I think Apto Trindomir has an astonishingly deceptive amount of wave control early game, especially against something that like Malzahar, who I used to think of him as a pusher, but he's not really a pusher until he gets items under his belt. His wave clear and pushing power are relatively weak early levels, especially against someone like Trindomir, who just kind of spit on him and get some free hits. So I really think Apto is going to have a, an opportunity similar to last game, where he can just clear, clear the wave, and if he has Predator, he's going to be at least somewhat threatening. Probably, I would imagine, more for jungle invades with Mitmok, but, you know, he likes going bottom last game. Maybe he'll be going bottom again this game. Yeah. Again, can very pathing. Uh, we actually have seen him uh, in the last series they played against the Zoo do some very creative pathing on the Graves, you know, to exploit a lot of uh, early game stuff like... Uh, there's the old Kindred path where you take your dash right after your first buff, and then hop you can hop over you hop over wall you hop over a dragon pit or you hop over a baron baron pit and then immediately go to the enemy buff if you know they're not starting it and you know they're probably full clearing, uh, which Master Yi is you know want to do as a hyper scaling jungler that doesn't necessarily have to fight a ton early especially against something like a Graves. Now I'm going to assume that neither team is listening to the broadcast because here's my prediction for how the jungle is going to to go out. I think that, obviously, between Master Yi and Graves, one of them is going to take Ignite. That is my first prediction. <laughs> my second prediction is that whichever jungler takes Ignite will win at their very first confrontation, just because of the advantage that Ignite gives. But I think that if Graves takes the Ignite, which I, I think he should in this matchup, he should um, take red buff and immediately try to uh, engage on Master Yi. Just go into his jungle, take everything he can. Just because Graves at level 2 is so much stronger than Yi at level 2. Like, I, even without Ignite, I think he might win this if both jungles took Flash. But, now obviously the reverse is Master Yi takes Ignite, Graves takes Flash. I think that in that scenario, Master Yi would win. Yeah, I like, like this that. Is all, this is all <laughs> speculative. Again, this is all speculative. Because we don't see their summoners. This is a very summoners dependent matchup. Uh, and I think that Graves should win this early because he do, again he does like to invade early and Master Yi does not like to be invaded early but an exhaust or an ignite in place of flash for either one of these junglers can just swing that dynamic completely but spectator the delay is over yep. yeah th I think there's going to be a lot of focus on the jungle this match yeah, this do you kind of agree great, with that? Yeah. very season 10 meta looking place <laughs> the hyper well, honestly i mean we're not uh, yeah the, yeah I'm you're pretty uh, i can't i can't argue too much of that i mean master yi is you know kind of eh, when you're looking at competitive meta you know doesn't really crop up too terribly often but is gonna be probably game is gonna be lethal tempo on the master yi and it is ignite on the graves and flash on the master yi so i think that graves should invade as soon as he possibly can Again, depending Again, on I would say like it's, he might do a buff buff route and try to vertical it is uh, one thing we've definitely seen him do in the past. So that could be an option, but in either event, getting on into game number two. Currently, Mitmox team looking to go up for that 2-0 lead and push this to match point. Universe Soul after a crushing defeat in game one. I mean, you can lose one more and still look for the reverse sweep on this one, but... It'd be a lot better to find some purchase here early on in the series. And it looks yeah, I don't like... know how much I like that lethal tempo on Master Yi either. I, I've personally really like. Oh, hold it's on, really hold on. broken on a lot of melees, I think. Oh, <laughs> uh, like ships in the how night. Did he just walk away from that. Like ships in the <laughs> night, gentlemen. But this is very important because Graves gets the early ward down onto blue buff, so he knows which buff Master Yi is starting, and he'll be able to predict. Uh, with relatively high accuracy, where Master Yi is going to be at most stages of the game. Yep, Tacky Pumice grabs some early souls there off of Apto. Now, Take I mean, I, if I can go back to Lethal Tempo, I agree it's a really strong rune, but it feels like a win more on Master Yi, right? You need to set up to get those resets with him, and I don't necessarily feel like the attack speed's what you want there. I really like Tale of Blades better because it lets you get that first kill. 
and then you can kind of s snowball in through there. So maybe I'll be proven uh, wrong here. I don't know, but I, I would have preferred the other one. Either way, Yi is gonna be really important. I mean, starting leashless on blue buff. Yeah, start interesting start here for Master Yi. Give start leash top set again. This could be to counteract the invade. Uh, if Mitmok wants to go for a very early invade into any of his jungle camps, because again, they know Yi is top side, they had the vision there, they spotted him out. Yeah. Um, um, he could just go for the invade here and try to yes. kill him, that is one option, but the, uh, Yi can just run away from this gank and give up his wolves, and he's pretty much fine, honestly, if he gives up wolves, and yeah, not even gonna push him that far, so... Universe, actually, Universe still gets off really, really well with that invade, because now, way ahead in tempo. Yeah, big brain pathing coming out of that from Universal. Yeah. Uh, and we've already oh, seen it. Trindamir's oh, smash. Oh, never mind. Here we go. This is, what, this is the other thing I was no. expecting. <laughs> uh, is Mitmok immediately is going to run through mid to get into this bot side jungle. Uh, this is the other thing that we were expecting him to do. Might look to steal away the red buff. Or they could just... Look said, or just, yeah, look for the bot lane that's over. Then Tacky Pumas already expends the flash. That's a ghosting Trindamir <laughs> coming for your AD carry. Never a good sight to see. First blood on the app, though, as Mitmok grabs a slow with the red buff. Ignite comes down, has the shield on 69 tree lever. So should be able to get out of this one. And will just be the one first blood kill. Now that is the second two minutes and 30 seconds roam we have seen out of <laughs> Apto in two games. Uh, oh, Universal might be a little deep here as the invade is slightly ill-warranted. As four members come up in strength. No, there's something really wrong with this game, and that is the fact that Mitmok has only four CS at the three minute mark. Yes, and uh. possibly <laughs> kill a money killer here if the Malzar isn't very hit girl. Universal needs great Alpha Strike to get out of the top, but doesn't matter as Lucian's there to pick up the auto attack. Root comes down through, heal is expended, Vayne also having to flash away to dodge out from any further follow-up auto attacks, and Mitmok's team just gonna pick up another quick kill. This one onto the veins, the scaling threats continuing to grow in strength. Now, uh, Mitmok is three camps uh, behind on Universe Soul here, but I think that Oh, Tadaki Pumice uh, is playing with a little bit too much fire here in mid lane. Is, yep, there comes the taunt, Who there comes the kill. Mitmok with the Q secures that one and gives a one-way express ticket for Tacky Pumice back onto the Fountain. He's also able to double scuttle the universe sold, which is never what you want to see out it's of your good, but it's, it's double scuttle. Uh, it's, it's yeah, it's okay. Now. It's then, fine. It's a. It's like, oh yeah, I got this much extra gold. Yeah. Who? Now, uh, I mean, to be fair, every little bit of gold does count. Yep. If you're Master Yi and Graves. Uh, I don't think we mentioned it in Champ Select either. Just a real quick note. Sorry to cut you off. Uh, we do have multiple rule swap, like I was uh, inferring, as Money Killer still in the mid lane. Universal Yo Jungle Sue you actually was top lane this time. So. This guy yeah, swapped lover. around. Tacky Pumice, I think, switching between support and AD yes, and carry. Yes, I believe so as well. So you have a lot, of, a lot of swapping around, switching it up on people as... So far in the game, just doing a quick CS checkup. Big lead in the jungle in terms of farm for the Master Yi. Got about a camp, two camp lead, <laughs> camp and a half, somewhere in there. So getting a CS despite the invades, despite the early fighting. A camp and some change. Uh, however... Bot lane, this is gonna be possibly two more quick kills of Tacky Pumice. Nowhere to go. Tom Kench has abandoned the AD carry. And Lucianal picks up yet another kill. Now you were mentioning that uh, Vayne you didn't think was a great pick into the Senna bottom lane. but It is characteristically not. Yes, but one <laughs> gank. One gank. Keyword, characteristically. <laughs> one gank. As mid lane. A buff from Vayne. Apto. I thought it was just taking a lot of around here is no, another catch out there. here in the jungle. Universal trying to do it again. Is Ignite gets one kill, but doesn't have the alpha track to continue for more as uh, Lucian actually able to pick that one. I thought it was Apto for a minute with the auto attack. Mitmok being shielded from the tongue lash by Apto and ends up being a double kill for Lucian, who is now four and zero on the vein at just six minutes in the game. They also get the, the dragon off of that as well, which is it just pours salt in the wound. And that's not what you want to see when you have your Malzahar, who doesn't have control of the wave, but has the wave under the enemy's turret, or is very nearly there. 
that was his position to be in, but instead he was still mid lane while Apto was the one that roamed down and made it a 3v2, 3v1. Just Apto controlling the mid lane really, really well here with the Strindomir, and it's it's really kind of showing in all the other lanes, I think. Yep. Universal trying to pick up some of this farm here. Has to be a little bit careful. Apto does have level 6, so... He has level 6? Alt and Ghost up, which is uh, yeah, Money Killer though. Also good. with level six now. Yeah. Has the ultimate available for him as well. Of course, no quick silver sashes this early in the game, unless you want to completely stunt um, your growth. Uh, Graves looking for another invade on the top side. Now that CS deficit between Master Yi and Graves has just been completely removed. That is. Uh, oh. Universal found out. Spike goes the way of Mitmok, and now Universal blinded and not Alpha Strike. And he shall take his third death of the game. Very nicely played for Mitmok to make that one happen. It's just like he has Sixth Sense or something, or maybe he yeah, can track is... jungle camps, one or the other. <laughs> or maybe he's a high Masters tier jungler playing one of his best champions. By yeah. the way, he sniffed out that kill. He picked it up. Graves, I, I still think he's a little bit uh, and uh, yeah, say powerful. And... <laughs> Quick <laughs> solo kill on the enemy mid laner. Just casually gonna put that one in the bag. Apto now looking for a signature there. Oh, Great good. thought. By only place, she's gonna burn the flash. As Universal no. being chased down again, Mitmok reloads in his face while he W's and gets the kill <laughs> with the last proc of Q. Are you going to be apt though? Taking tower for his brethren as they dive the turret, but only plays trees. Taking way too much tower damage, gets a minor taunt off. W doesn't slow the right target. Now Tanky Pumas has the vision, can get some auto attacks off on Apt though. However, Mitmok in from behind. Tanky Pumas, goodbye, good night, see you later. 69 Ooh. shield probably no flash suppression actually grab a big 700 gold shutdown on a money killer very nice play by the Valdar to turn that one I don't think Lucianal was prepared to get it after the Kadam and it isn't prepared for the Tom can't re-engage either 69 shield now pursuing shutdown for Universal onto the vein only plays trees next on the menu and this Kench is hungry 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 licks him right up the only one who survives out of that engagement is Apto and suddenly Universe Finding their way back in this game, now only 1.5k. This is definitely Mitmok's game to lose. Uh, with that, um, I don't know, death under tower. It was definitely an unfortunate set of circumstances that uh, Malzahar was also flanking the flag from uh, Mitmok's graves. But, I don't know, I feel like a 5, 1, and 4 graves at this stage in the game, he was able to buy items off that fast recall and I think he's pretty clearly the strongest person in the game right now apart from maybe Lucian. Yeah but despite all of this that seems to have been going really heavily in Mitmok's favor it is only a one two thousand point a, a gold gold lead coming out of Mitmok's team here so it's not as devastating as it could be but obviously not what you want this early in the game. Yeah. Uh, the big difference, by the way, being on the vein of all people, the Graves is only about 800 gold ahead of the Master Yi, whereas the vein has a good 1,000 gold lead on the Senna, so... The bottom lane actually being the biggest gold deficit, which I guess shouldn't be too surprising, but... I mean, it is a farming oh. setup. This is not, this is not, you know, this is not the bot lane tech that we're accustomed to, for certain. When you run the Tom Kench, normally you have the Tom Kench farming up, getting... A, all that go for the tank items as he finds his way onto only place trees. Money killer here as well. I think trying to save doesn't have the ultimate up just yet. Only place trees though, not even required. As money killer grabs that one with a quick auto attack as well as some burn damage. Nothing else really to be gained here as mid lane. The sacrifice for this as Rift Herald picked up just recently by Mitmok. So we'll see how much Universe loses for this play in bot as the vein still alive and well to pick up this XP. As a hauler, as ultimate, that did just come down or come off cooldown immediately after that play in the bottom lane. He might look to look. Yeah, there it is. He yep. locks down the vein. She is being fed over to Senna of all. Ooh, I don't know. I think what you he was to trying to get that. Too. It was a good execute by Money Killer though. So yes. don't, don't don't give any gold back over. So that's still a fine dive. Uh, no, Senna's not really the person you will rather have gold. I'd rather have gold in the Master Yi. But you know what? You take it. It's on a carry. Gives a little bit of gold inflection. Hopefully, can start holding her own here shortly. 
but look at the mid lane. Yeah, I was going That's... to mention that. Uh, yeah. Giving a Trindamir two free towers and oh. a whole Pitbull lane. actually pushed off Drake here as well. Tacky Pumas gonna try to get down with the universe. Oh, and it's stolen Mike. away. The smite goes the way of Mitmog yet again. Good devour on the Mitmog. Try to keep him out of the fight for as long as possible. Universe Soul going through, but it's immediately taken out by Apto and company. Another Q lands. Tacky Pumas, I don't know what you're doing on the backside, buddy, but Vayne has seemed to clean you up pretty nicely. Uh, and a, another huge whip for Mitmog's team. Gonna balloon the gold lead up to 4K. Money Killer, the next target of attack. Apto. Still has the ultimate if you really wanted to go for it. Uses the Q to heal up so it doesn't die to the burn damage. No! Oh. Tacky Pumas gets it with a minion auto, I believe. Yeah, that was a minion auto that killed him. Uh, very, very close. And uh, maybe you should have pressed your R key. Yeah. You never be Do? too safe. I'm um, sure. Q. Yeah, I don't know is, uh, if Q is on cooldown or not. <laughs> this is a possible diving on top lane here. Only place trees is up there. The E lands, and yeah, this Malphite fight is not long for this earth. Only place trees. going to grab that one, but he might be sacrificed here. Certainly, actually, sacrificed to Universe Soul. As block Ooh. job, some reason diving the Malzahar. Not really sure what the plan was there. Does get over the blast cone and away from the tongue lash. And with the help of the scuttle crab speed boost, able to walk his way out of that one after what was a slightly poor decision to knock off. Yeah, momentary lapse in judgment there coming out of Mintmox team. As that trade was not anywhere near their favor. Oh, Master Universal in the back. But he's going to face himself with Mintmox and App though. Pops the W. Not sure why. 6 9 Trilover now the target of the engage app, though. Fearlessly running forward, looking for the top catch. Finds him. Universal on to Mitmok. Doesn't have the damage, just barely surviving. Sub 100 HP on the graves. And now Tacky Bumis hits the W, so shouldn't be in too much trouble down here, bot lane. But it is. Oh, maybe he is. One more auto attack. The exhaust not going to be enough. His mid lane. Undying Ray is going to save him from the Malefic Visions. And Apto grabs that kill, gets out of dodge, pops the Q, now looking for possibly more onto the Malphite, but with that low health bar, you still do have to be careful. So you might not be fed, but he will do some type of damage to you. And with that, again, Mitmox team is grabbing more and more and more and more off of the overextensions of Universe. Almost 7k gold in 30 minutes as Universal <laughs> pops himself over the blast code. Oh! Rest in pieces, may your May your soul find rest in the life stream. Goodness gracious. Sent right back to whence he came. That was truly unfortunate. I don't think you can call that anything else. That was just wrong place, wrong time. Wrong uh, hope that a bush was, was safe. Yeah, just wrong blast cone, right? Wrong blast cone, <laughs> I mean. Oops. <laughs> uh, yeah. No vision in my jungle. I have no idea where the enemy team is. I, let's just go over here real quick. <laughs> now, I do feel pretty confident in saying that this is uh, a a very near guaranteed victory for Mitmox team just because they have these two hyper carries incredibly fed on Graves and Vayne with that uh, Mordekaiser being a constant threat. Oh, looking lane. for Apto here. Does secure the W. Galliolti, though, coming in to peel off. 69 Tree Lover already engaged. Mitmok off on the side as well as Apto. Going forward, Tacky Pumice. Nowhere to run. I love your vision. Doing a lot of burn damage. Universal will get only Blaze Trees here on the backside. Flashing away from Apto, who gets immediately devoured. Still an ulti, though. Should be able to survive. No! Universal still alive, and the shutdown goes over to... The Thomas Kench, however, is still a double kill for Mitmok, untouched on the backside, Lucianal as well. And and one on the Graves and seven and two on the vein is just one hill too many. A two item Graves at 15 minutes is uh, horrifying, I think is the word I'm looking for. <laughs> T terrifying. Uh, <laughs> a presence that solo wins games. Um, yeah, it's, it's definitely not looking great for the Universal's team. And that was an unfortunate fight there for Universal. Very close to actually turning it around and getting the resets that he needed. Oh, but Universal he is... Oh, good W. Uh, Managed to immune a lot of that damage on the backside. So will die for face checking a brush in his own jungle entrance. However, might face check it the second time. How There's the ulti. No QSS. And Mitmok has overextended. And 6 9 Lover now maybe doing so in kind as he is going a little bit too deep. Lucian grabs one. Apto diving in. Finds another. Only place three is actually the beneficiary of that gold increase. Tacky Pumas now trying to grab away, but it's slow comes down to the boat and he wants Universal. Oh! Oh my. Explosion. <laughs> That's uh, a crit and a half. Tacky Pumas 
next on the Mendo Afto. Also joining the seven kill club. Pop himself up to seven and two. And mid lane inhibitor falling possibly at 16 minutes in the game. Not something we normally recommend, but when you're hitting it this hard in team fights at this point, uh, you might as well just take everything you want because no one's really going to stop you. It's a 10k gold lead sub 20 minutes. And once again, we are rapidly nearing the game over territory. I'd yeah. say we've passed that a little while ago. <laughs> but if you if you want to call it nearing... Uh... Well, there's like, you know, there's objective <laughs> bounties and stuff now. There's more ways to get back in. It, it uh, block job though. Cancel out of the Hextech gate. Gonna have to try to get out this one on himself. Puts the Malzahar into the ultimate. Trying to get some damage out. Good damage on the Obliterate actually, but the barrier is gonna keep Money Killer alive for now. Good Zonion as well to immune the second Obliterate. This is on the backside. Mid is exhausted. Can't do too much damage to Money Killer. Will grab the shutdown. However, Lucianal simply waiting for him to come out on the other side. Apto now on the back line. Under turret has the ultimate though, so should be just fine to keep pursuing Tacky Pumice yet again. Six nine Shieldover now gonna try to peel him off as the rest of the team dies around them in droves. A double kill, make it a triple. And that might just be the That's end the of the that game. Is... As there's I'm... super minions and a herald in the base at just 17 minutes in. And if, ladies and gentlemen, if you thought game one was a lesson in how to stop a game of League of Legends, game two is a treat for you. And just over 18 minutes with a dancing Rift Herald. We will end game two, and Mintmox team shall advance to match point. Wow. <laughs> the that universe there really tried to take a page out of Mintmox's book and play that Master Yi that just likes to farm up, but Mintmox said, nah, fam, that's my game. And he showed us why he plays those scaling champions and why you have to fear them. So I don't know what to expect coming out of the universe in this next game, but I, I kind of hope it's not that again. Yeah, yeah, I mean, there's definitely some adjustments you have to make. You lost game one hard, fair enough. Yeah. Happens. When you lose a game in 18 minutes with a Dancing Herald, that is a demoralizing, crushing blow. Like, that is, you just got pubbed <laughs> by these guys. Just clubbed over the head, beaten down, put into the floor. And you have to make draft changes. I'm sure the mental is not good right now on the universe after these two games. I can't imagine it would be. Uh, hopefully there are some stalwart souls there that can bring it back together. We've seen reverse sweeps happen in the past. It is not that intrinsically uncommon to League of Legends, but... Yeah, I... these first two games, gentlemen, I know where I would be putting my money if I was a betting man. I really want to see the universe going back to three banning the jungle. The two banning just is... I mean, you can't really ban out Mitmok. We were kind of talking about that between the games, but the two ban is just so much less banning than the three ban, especially when you leave something like Graves, who I think right now is still seems very strong in the meta. So I would have rather them had at least have left Kindred open than Graves, gone with the Graves Karthus ban. But yeah, it's just what do you do at this point? It's really difficult here to see what Universe should be doing moving forward here, since it doesn't seem like the bans can get them to any obvious winning position. They actually have to play it out and win on the Rift. Yeah. It definitely does come down to individual player skill after all the, the bans are said and done, because I think it's very difficult to ban out either team just because on mitmox team every player every um i guess carry player has so many i don't know carries that they could pick i mean mitmox has a bunch of carries uh apto even if he picks utility he can carry from that and on the universe's team everyone on their team is so flexible i can play all those roles like you said they just love to switch around uh in roles it's just difficult to ban them out so i think it does just come down to who can execute better and that does come different every game to game so a comeback is possible that is i will agree with you on that one i mean yeah it's always possible you are just doing sorry production right. okay we're gonna take a three minute break here real quick on cast i am being told so we're back here in three minutes for game three match point over to mitmox team
Hello, hello, and welcome back to Penn State League in our coverage of the of the fall 2021 PSU LCS finals between Mitmox team and the universe. Currently, if you're just hopping in or need a reminder, Mitmox team up two to zero over the universe in two absolute slaughters of a game. First game in low 20s, uh, 10k gold lead at the end. Huge win for Mitmox team. Second game finished in 18 minutes with a dancing herald and 13k in the bank. Uh, Mitmox team absolutely crushing it right now. Though we do for game three draft have a switch in sides. It will be Mitmox team taking the blue side and the universe will save themselves a counter pick. This one is going to be interesting for certain. Again, biggest question right now. Can the universe bounce back from those losses? Those are two really, really hard losses in games one and two. When you're losing to Dancing Heralds in a competitive setting, especially in these long series like best of fives, it is such a hard deal to mention. Again, maybe they have some stalwart souls that kind of can boost up the rest of the team, keep that mental good, keep that team spirit high, say, hey, we can come back in here and just play BO1s and win them out. Uh, it's always possible. We've seen it happen in both PSU LCS, amateur, collegiate, professional, you name it. It's probably happened. Even some of the best teams in the world go down 10K in the early game and still can't manage to bring it back. So anything can happen as we get into game three draft. Mitmox team taking off the Irelia. Tom Kench taken away for the universe. So not going to lean toward that three jungler ban. You get our color cast we're talking about in game three. Two or post game two. It looks like Mitmox team gonna be keeping the same bands on to blue side. That all works and they're uh, Oh, they're gonna ban out Twist of Fate, so we're going Universe not focusing Mitmox. Just gonna give him choice of champion here, it would seem. Nope, uh, we'll ban out the Karthus, so it at least gets that one off the table. Again, very, very proficient on the pick. We'll have to see what Mitmox team wants to go with the B1 here. The Jinx is one that's uh, if you're looking for a like, fairly safe blindable AD carry. Uh, Jinx right now is pretty good with the Lethal Temple build, so can go for that angle if you want to blind your AD carry in. Uh, AD carry has not been a problem for Mitmox team much at all, but instead he's got to pick himself the Kindred. And again, he's Mitmox has been absolutely dominating these last two games. I have total faith they'll probably dominate here in Game 3 as well, or at least have a pretty solid performance. But blinding a Kindred is a very tough sell. And it's going to be immediately responded to by Draven Nautilus. That is beautiful. I like seeing the Draven. The, Dra the Draven is probably pro is, is pretty hype. The Draven is pretty hype. But, yeah, it's, as production is saying, it's pretty, yeah, it's more than likely going to Universe Soul. But either way, blinding Draven, again, you're still open to getting counter picks. Jin is not one of the picks I'm it thinking of. Pick, so, um... That's there not some, happening. There are support counter picks. Uh, I know that Draven, as a Draven player, I have never liked going into, into hard tanks like a Leona. I'll say Galio? we'll Galio. Similar yeah. function. Similar function can be very defensive with the taunt. That's true. He does He does go aftershock when he goes support, but Leona gets a free aftershock on W, so. <laughs> this is indeed true. The universe. I'm getting guess this is Jimmy Jungler on three. We can look at stuff like the Jarvan. No, we're going to blind Oriana. On R3, despite it not being banned out in any other game yet in the series. So, just going to take away the mid lane pick there, secure that one, and I guess uh, making no, sure of a team. Maybe they're looking for a specific uh, AK. Maybe they're looking for, or not AK, maybe they're looking for a specific jungler. It is. Uh, that they need, like, a team comp to play around. Uh, no. <laughs> None of that. Probably uh, not. I mean, yeah. No, uh, no. I'm getting word that is, they meant to ban Oriana, pick Urgot. Correct. Instead of banning Urgoth and picking Oriana. Okay, never mind then. It's just a screw up. <laughs> I... Analysis, ladies and gentlemen. Still it's not a jungler. Really cool. Still not <laughs> a jungler. Very true. We're buying that Urgoth is still also probably mid lane. Yes. It could be an Urgoth top lane though. I mean, it, it is. It could, uh, no, yeah, it's still very flexible. But I'm yes, Universe for the last several iterations of the team has been an Urgoth mid kind of team. So certainly something that could come up. Yep. Nice. I mean, very warranted Trindomir ban. Very warranted after last game. Apto was a bit of a problem child, as he was in game one of the Twisted Fate, which is also on the bench. So Apto going to have to 
expand the champion pool one more get three unique champions and the first three games here liberation uh Urgot, okay Urgot can also be flexed in jungle if you aren't a coward i would like to bring that up i don't know if i would ever pick him in a competitive setting i would say it's low probability low probability it's but... especially considering hecarim's locked in there i'd say it's even lower probability uh, <laughs> well you know it, it's always enough uh no um Victor mid lane coming out, and Victor is very strong right now with his Crown of the Shattered Queen build. Uh, he's very difficult to kill with that build. Very he's tanky, up. has a lot of movement speed, especially if he builds Cosmic Driver, takes um, fan, not Phantom Dancer, oh my lord, <laughs> Phase Rush. Words are hard, ladies and gentlemen. Words, Words are very hard. Um, so go with the Camille, so it will be, yeah, Urgot mid, and this is a full AD composition with a Draven. Up against a Scion. Up against a Scion Ooh. Galio, who is more likely to take in Victor, who now builds health items and resistances. <laughs> uh, and Zonia's is uh, still on his like top three items, I'm pretty sure. That's I mean, Zonia's is the top three items for most, most mages. mages. Yeah. But especially if you have a full AD team comp. That is, a, that is a common thread for mages just in general. That's not specific. Well, so... It does look like it's going to be a pretty interesting game, regardless. Uh, I do like the Scion top lane here. I yeah, think. No, Scion, especially after locking in full AD, Scion. Mm -hmm. As long as the, he's not camped by the Hecarim, because you can run into early, early game problems on Scion, where you are just kind of not able to get anything going. I would not like to see full AD Scion, that's for sure. I definitely want to see Tank Scion, even though it's into Camille, and again, that's yeah. not necessarily Scion's most favorable matchup, building Tank. Uh, just because of the utility it's going to provide for the rest of the game into every other team. Like, Randu and Zoma in this game is going to be an amazing item onto uh, Scion. So there's, like, all this good potential there. It's... I mean, Universe's team, besides Camille, has to get ahead early. Like, th this team is going to have to generate early leads. That's just the nature of Drake. Yeah, I mean, well, yes, and also you have an Urgot mid lane. Uh, yeah, Urgot scales, but it's a mid lane Urgot, so Victor's going to have full reign on how that lane ends up being played. And if Hecarim doesn't start getting kills early, Hecarim also falls off like fairly, like, consistently. The universe, again, has that split push advantage. Uh, with that Camille and Urgot, I think that Camille can just hard counter Victor in the side lane. Just because by the time he can uh, slow and stun her, he's already dead at some point. And I think that Urgot into Scion is a very Urgot favored matchup. Now, they do have the better team fighting team on the Mux team. I haven't even touched on the impact of Kindred yet. Uh, who is, I think the game is going to be played around just because of how Mimok has been playing and how the team comp shook out. But oh, it's, it's, it's going to be a this one's going to be good. This, this one yeah. should be interesting. Again, it's going to be... We haven't yet seen the universe actually like come up and get significant early game leads. In game one, it flipped back and forth for a little bit, but was pretty much solidly still in the control of Mitmox team. They had the tempo advantages. They, had, they were the ones making the plays. It's... It's something we haven't seen from them yet. Again, if picking these really early game champions like the Draven is what's going to facilitate them to be able to get an early game advantage and really accelerate their gold lead and then come out on top. Absolutely, that's an awesome strategy to pull out. Again, these, this is the kind of stuff you need in elimination situations is sometimes playing standard just isn't going to be your friend. You have to start pulling out pocket pits. You have to start pulling out the, the uh, unconventional to find advantages. And I mean, we have Urgot mid lane. We're running full AD team with a Camille for some true damage input so tanks aren't too insanely ridiculous to deal with. It's still going to be a very hard game for them to play again. And again, if they don't get significant early leads, especially if top lane is not like... I'm hoping 69 Tree Liver on Camille bullies top lane to death. Because if Blockjob is going even with Camille, he's going to be an absolute monster for the rest of his team to deal with. Because yeah, there's no one who's going to kill that Scion. Yes. I can personally vouch that 69 Tree Lover is good on those scaling picks. Uh, but... I haven't seen him in a competitive setting with my, with my own two eyes yet. Camille as well, that's a little bit of a rougher go. <laughs> so I understand, like, yeah, this should be a matchup Scion loses. It's just Scion is so good into the rest of the enemy team, it might not matter so long as he's staying close. 
Like you just, it's one of those things you just have to be in grapple shot. And while you might have a fed Camille situation, you have tools to deal with Camille. Lambda Spite's very good in the Camille. You have Galio to peel off a of Camille, especially with Hero's Entrance. Um, again, the Galio, very defensive pick this game. You're looking for counter engages off of Nautilus hooks. You're looking for Hero's Entrances to stop dives from the Nautilus, from the Urgot, from the Camille, from the Hecarim. Uh, you've always defensive tools. And then you can also follow up on Scion Engage. You can still follow up if, like, Kindred is getting picked off in, in ulti. Like, there's all these different ways you can play it on the side of Mitmox team. They just, it feels like they have a much more cohesive unit. And especially against a very low range composition, as um, the universe has stuff like Victor that offers so much zone control with the Death Flames or with the Gravity Well, is just going to be incredibly potent when setting up around objectives. And it might be a little bit harder for Universe to find good fights despite the engage they have because of that zoning pressure. Now, if I was Universe Soul, I would like the look of the enemy team. Victor is the only real threat to Draven in these two team comps here. Uh, aside from maybe a, a sneaky Kindred flank, which is always possible given how Mimok plays. But uh, I just say the Kindred is probably... I, I'm assuming the Kindred is going to be strong. We've seen it get absolutely put into the dirt before, and Apto like is the one to pop off and carry, but it's not a regular occurrence, that's for sure. But as Draven, you just have uh, three burly guys in front of you, keeping everything from like hitting you, aside from those Victor lasers or Kindred flank, and you can just pump out damage because uh, Jin in a team fight is either a low range but dealing more consistent damage, or he's longer range with his ultimate. But then again, it's Draven. You do have those three uh, tankier bruisers in front of you. I mean, not even counting to them. So Draven, you can just pump out consistent damage as long as Victor isn't specifically hitting you with all of his uh, abilities. Yeah. Again, there's plenty of avenues. I'm not saying the universe is by any means like out of this one. If they get early leads, they are going to be incredibly scary to deal with. You have a winning sideline in Camille. Urgot's going to win sideline against whoever he's against. Uh, Hecarim from ahead becomes both unkillable, great engage, and also still does damage. Uh, it's like the three things that you shouldn't have together. Uh, speed, durability, and power. It's like the cardinal rules. You can not you can have two, but not the third. Hecarim gets all three because, you know. He's a horse. <laughs> That's why. It's all the advantages of the man and all the advantages of the horse. Uh, so, I don't I think the universe... I would put the universe at a draft advantage here. Even with the full AD team, I think that Camille and uh, the armor shred that Draven... They should be able to... They so. should be able to get enough leads. The question is, and uh, pray tell me this, gentlemen, what is the cutoff that you give the universe for, like, this is the amount of gold lead you need to be up with the lanes you have drafted at, like, let's say... Let's give, a, let's give like, 20 minutes. How far minutes. ahead does Universe need to be? I'd say at 20 minutes is when they start to fall off. That's, uh... That's what I'm saying. What's the gold, far, what's the yeah, gold yeah, lead you need at 20 far. to prevent that? I think at that point you want to have a lot of a Dragon Soul completed and a lot of turrets down, and I would, I would say almost like a 5k gold lead. I would say 5k gone. gold lead to 2 5k minutes. gold lead with the Dragon Advantage. Not necessarily the Soul, obviously, but... Now, Draven, either way, it, ooh... Draven does fall off, but he is still an attack damage carry. He doesn't, like, fall off, fall off. He's still going to be constantly outputting damage as long as he can be protected. Uh, and I think they have a really good team comp to protect him. I'm not too worried about the Draven falling off. Now, obviously, mm -hmm. Urgot mid with pressy attack isn't going to scale incredibly well. But One advantage I think the universe has for the first time in our three games so far is that they think they have the mid lane pressure advantage here. And I think that's going to be potentially very powerful if for no other reason than keeping Apto under his turret instead of going down bottom lane and picking up that's, that random certainly... kills and running into the jungle there with um, with Kindred. So Welcome. that's the big no change I'm noticing. That's, that's certainly an option here. Again, we're going to see how it ends up playing out. Victor, despite being, you know, that scale and control, he does have an actual quite potent laning phase when you get to poke with Q. So... Yeah, Urgot's a ranged champ, but not not really. He is a ranged champ. He, he's ranged with heavy quotation marks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, does, he is ranged, just not very ranged. Mm -hmm. Victor can obviously poke him out, but I think that Hecarim ganks can obviously just destroy the Victor. I think that 
it's going to be kind of difficult to kill Urgot with Kindred Ganks. So I'd say that factoring in mid lane and jungle, since jungle is essentially just mid lane support, uh, I'd put the advantage still on Urgot over Victor, even with Aptos insane lane phase. Right, and I think that's going to be a major contributing factor, because as I was kind of mentioning off air, Aptos kind of been the person to put his team on the back on his back for the early bit, at least in the first game. The second game, well, we kind of pretend the second game didn't exist, really. Let's, let's, <laughs> let's, let's, the, the second the first game, game has no conducive data points other than they got fed. Yes, so, but the first game, Apto was very important, and we have actually a pretty good trade coming out here from Camille, showing why that's a powerful champion. Uh, it ends up true damage is awesome to have. Yep. One for the, or, uh, block job, one for the level one cheese, didn't really find it anything well, didn't get the knock up on Camille, so trade is over as good at bot lane, but Tonic responded in kind. Exhaust goes out very early there, I think possibly expecting a larger all in as with that trade. Just gonna be for a summoner up there. That Those is exhaust. Trades, favorite so, trade, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Raven always wants you to be nice and low so he can all in you at his leisure, and that is not good, especially if you did get that burn. Oh, the exhaust. Look, at, look at Mimok. Look at Mimok. Look at what he's doing. He's doing the same pathing that uh, he did before while I was um, I was solo casting on uh, Next to Radio's channel. He went red, Raptor's Gromp, pathed around the Tri Bush topside to invade Red Buff without having any vision of him. So I think he's going to go for that again. Just to try I remember to that. the possibility. Yeah. I mean, he can probably just do it for free. It looks like, though, he'd rather go towards yeah. top lane here. Yes, he's got G Lever. Has committed. I don't think he has hookshot leveled yet. Needs to get level three, but the execute damage oh. comes in. First blood goes over to block job. Man, look, man, look at that for that on Nick Mox. Start accelerating that gold lead, but hey, you take the 450 gold regardless of yeah. where it goes. And it yeah, looks that... like he's still going to go for the invade, too. Yeah, and that path that definitely you pointed can. out too, though, is the reason that was so successful, right? He was there before the three minute mark, and most oh, people gonna be a confrontation as well. Oh, that's unfortunate. The Q for Mitmog actually goes onto the red buff and aggroes instead of hitting Sue, but flashes means that this kill is definitely secured as the blast cone will not be the saving grace for the Hecarim, and this is gonna be an absolute slaughter of a jungle game slaughter. as now. Red Buff's collected still has most of his blue side to go through. Can go grab Krugs as well. Uh, could just choose to abandon the mark entirely, considering bot lane doesn't have pressure, and just continue to try to get CS and farm and XP leads. Uh, as they're already up 1k gold in three minutes. If we do have a stack check going, uh, Kindred is already at one stack. So, uh, yeah, from the, the kill on can, that. Mock can just choose to sack the bottom lane uh, stack. He can just decide, no, I don't want to go for it, since he is already up one yeah i mean there's no point going for a risky mark that you know is most likely hot yeah. high risk it's like the high risk low reward thing it's like yeah i could go get this mark and possibly get into a four four fight over it but is that something we want to be doing at this point in the game is this beneficial to my team is that mark really worth it or do i think i can get it elsewhere and if i mit mock with how he's been playing this series i'm like yeah i'll get the marks it's a matter of time that was almost a max range hook shot coming out of there from Camille. And she actually did almost pick up the uh, Scion there. If he had, you know, walked forward instead of walking back for half a second, I think this would be a potential kill up top. Quite possibly. Well. Instead, looking toward mid. Yeah. Going toward Crab now. Could still look that Wave has yet to crash. He wants to skip the Crab. Could look. There's a, quite a large Wave hover, so I'm not sure if they want to fight into it. Also, okay. again. With now level three hookshot available, ganking top lane significantly harder for Kindred to sign, and CC is a lot less reliable. Now, Camille does have that strong early game, even with her incredibly strong late game. She can just, if she has that wave stacked up, I think she might be able to 2v1, even with uh, Mitmok's lead, because he hasn't been able to, to buy anything yet. Yep. Is a little bit down. Does go back for the noon quiver, so he's gonna be clearing camps a lot faster now. Gets that extra creep damage as well as attack speed, AD, everything you want as an AD carry. And so far, once again, so good with the side of Mitmox. Forwarding themselves a comfortable about 1k, a little bit more than 1k gold leads thus far. A uh, pretty big camp lead here in the jungle. But camps don't mean everything, uh, especially with the changes to catch-up experience in the jungle. That is um, a, a huge factor that you just can't forget about, because 
no matter how far behind a jungler gets anymore, as long as they have access to their camps, they will be relatively equal in levels. I see is. That comes down to a tree lover actually taking quite a bit of damage from block job. He's back for his bombing cinder. Again, has that kill advantage, so he's getting a lot more tanky items. A little quicker than Camille might like. And it looks like Kindred is getting that early uh, dragon. Yep, 630 ah. dragon spawn, so trying to get that early soul stacking. Continue to push leads is... Now dive under the turret and block jump finds a solo kill pretty cleanly in top lane. Well played, sir. Scion solo bolo. Yeah, gets the knock up on Q, baits out the Hextech ultimate, and then immediately just ults backwards into the target. Quite well done. Yeah, that was a really nice. And then Draven is just nothing much is happening bot lane, which has Draven. I don't know. It's it's not fantastic, but. You know, uh, it, with the changes to his ultimate um, executing below his stack percentage, it's not terrible anymore as long as you don't die. And it looks like they're doing a pretty great job at not dying. I think that <laughs> as long as Mitmok continues to ignore the bottom lane, I mean, rightfully so, uh, Draven should just be fine farming right now. Yeah, but Bobby not being ignored by a side of universes, they're going to take down two to try to get a kill here. Good E flash by only place to. Get the knock up CC and then get the heck out of dodge. That will immune the gank. One summoner spell burned, as well as the ghost on Sue. With some resources expended. Still, though, nothing of great significance gained. Flash timer on Galio is certainly something, but Flash could be significantly worse. It is a uh, one of the stronger parts of this kit, especially in the support. Flash, I mean, flash on support, especially engaged supports, is always uh, pretty darn good to have, but we don't complain when you're not dying to a Hecarim, so. Oh, yeah. We, it, I believe, uh, how, how do the kids phrase it? We take those. We take those. <laughs> <laughs> now, Apto in the mid lane, uh, up quite a bit of CS and uh, has survived the early game against Money Killer. Which I think is a, the scariest part of the game as Victor in this matchup. Just because Urgot can... Uh, yeah, it is. Zero, you give him a chance. I mean, look at the CS difference as well. 2900 to 2300 in gold. 68 to 51. Uh, that's going to be even out even more after this gank comes through. Stun still lands from the gravity well. Chaos Storm just can't get the kill, but Mitmok will be able to hop around. Ult comes out from Sue, but it pushes Mitmok the wrong direction. Now Stan United... Or not Stan United. Heroes entrance, sorry. Comes in to secure the double kill for Mitmok. And we are up 5-0 to zero in kills. It might not be the absolute slaughter we had in game 2, but still a hearty 3k gold lead at 9 minutes for Mitmok and company. Now, if we get a stack check, just from my own personal uh, spectating, uh, Kindred is at 3 marks right now. So yeah, looking for that 4th mark here. Might venture down to the wrap to grab it, but Huge once that 4th mark is secured, that will be pretty good. Hookshot actually canceled here, so this is a dead tree lover. Next of all, the will come down, but Mitmok is so darn strong at the moment. Uh, that's an easy kill, yeah. Hook shocked in instead of, or got canceled on the hook shot, I should say. Was trying to get out of the dodge. Looks like Mitmok, Mitmok is good go. timing once again. Rift Herald here. Yep, should be able to solo it. Kindred actually is ludicrously good at doing Herald. Even uh, by herself the... is, ooh. Dredge line gonna land onto Lucianal and bot lane Universal. Not really able to get any auto attacks in though. Only gets one to only plays trees. Not gonna do any significant damage. I mean, the second dredge line missing. It's actually gonna be Lucianal getting a decent trade back in with the fourth shot. But yeah, with these random Draven axes coming through, very hard for this Jin to kind of play this lane out. You know, earlier I commented on about how Apto was the reason that his team was able to make it through the early games. At least he did a lot of work to get them into a comfortable position. Uh, well, Mitt Mock scaled up, but it's been the exact opposite this game. Apto's been free to sit around and get a nice 20 CS lead here in the mid lane. And Mitt Mock's been around everywhere. He's been a part of every kill except for that cheeky breaky solo kill up there by the Scion. Uh, so far this game, he is just... He's a monster and a half. I, I, is he Smurf? Like, <laughs> are, are you Smurfing? Is he a Diamond your... Force Smurf? Like, <laughs> he's, he's, a nast he's Masters. No, not Apto. Oh, Apto. Oh, Apto's... Um... Apto's Masters. I thought McMock yeah. was Diamond. 
Mitmok is peak masters. Okay, uh, never mind. He, he, he is, is masters. Mitmok. I don't know. I, yeah, yeah, technically it's just, technically I guess. I'm not sure if he plays on the main account anymore. Again, you all know how it is with League. I'm sure we have people watching who have like three alt accounts. <laughs> Some uh, Dr. Eggman's with 70 alternative accounts. <laughs> you fools. <laughs> uh, Oh, it's Uber and Gage coming in here on Apto. This is a little bit strange. Universal probably didn't get it on Mitmok here, but the support's <laughs> already dead, and Lambda Spy is still available. Universal trying to get back into it to try to get the healing because Chaos Storm is there, but the damage is too much from Kindred. Picked up the double kill. Monkey, money kill, sorry, going back in, and that's going to be a third kill over to Mitmok's team. And <laughs> there is yet to be a kill on the board for the universe, and there's still yet to be. As Suzu now engaged upon, has to use the ult to get away, but. Curtain calls up, not even necessary. Apto just walks up with a death ray. And it is 10 to 0 and kills. 6k in the bank at 11 minutes in. Uh, possibly another solo queue angle, or solo kill, solo kill angle in top lane here, depending on how 69 Tree Lover plays this. Except, uh, eh, we take, yeah, we take three tower shots. Who cares? Next take <laughs> ultimatum. Gonna try to keep the side on her tower. Does so not successfully. And that means solo kill for block job yet again. And that is uh, going tank Scion. This isn't even a uh, full AD. Nope, that is a full mythic tank Scion against a 0-4 Camille. Uh, um, uh, I and that gold not... lead is going up real quick. That <sighs> It's the same thing we saw in game game one, where like you start getting some hemorrhaging. You like have a pretty even, for the most part, you know, you give her a kill or two, fine. If you're down 0-2, 0-3 kills in your game, you're like, all right. We can work back from this. This isn't that big of a deal. You know, we can figure it out. Who cares? Yeah, it seems we have a universe here is they're continually hemorrhaging when they start dying. Uh, they just continue to die. Uh, case in point is Tree Lover this game. Uh, Sue's, Sue is having a really rough game on the Hecarim so far. The Urgot mid pick, which was this team's like, you know, five head pick for a lot of the season, is. <laughs> the pick, Jesus, <laughs> yeah, is just. Not working out as a universal is gone. Oh. Goodbye, buddy. That's a 6 0 kindred with lethality and full shield bow, sir. Uh, you are not touching that, especially when you have Sheen Caulfield's lethality in your inventory. Uh, Taunt goes down to three. That should secure kill on a money killer. Mock. Yes, uh, that Grab that. A four stack kindred, uh, giving Mitmok that increased range that he needs. Yep, and <laughs> with another double kill, gets to eight. No, we have. Ladies and gentlemen, a god amongst men. That is a uh, 10k gold advantage, um, again, at 13 minutes. And it's a 14-0 game. Now, I don't... Oh, Mitmox might be greeting this one. There comes it. Flashes away. Still, the dredge line comes through. But the Draven's already dead. That means there's no damage. Curtain call as well from downtown to put some more on top. And now 16 kills to none. Possibly looking for a perfect game. They got the 18-minute game. They got the Dancing Herald. Now they're looking for a perfect game. I don't think it's going to happen here as top lane getting caught out. Block yeah, doesn't have the ultimate. Looking for the solo kill. The burn might just do it. No, the healing is too much. But Sue not going in just yet. Now Money Killer entering the fray. Block does dodge away from the Q, so should be able to get out of the slow. But can he run away fast enough? This Hecarim is... Quite the swift animal. Grab the slow on the money killer. And just taking just the outside lane. Taking the outside lane, man. This is a, gonna be a tight race, and it looks like the Scion will end up winning. Has the tier two boots. So is just faster than everybody else. And now it looks like Mitmok has come up. So yep, uh, ooh, yep, uh, Suzu is uh, not really happy with that one. Money killer seeing his uh Juggler go down in three auto attacks to one eighth HP. Decides I'm gonna disdain away. Thank you very much. I disdain this conflict. Only plays trees. <laughs> grabs a good taunt and now the kill onto Universal. Not really sure what we were doing there. Past the tribush with no support, but hey. Now uh, Mitmok has ballooned up to seven marks. Cool. Uh, if we get another stack check. That at uh, 15 minutes we have a 12k gold lead. Kills? That gives a yeah. That oh, is uh, Mitmok looking for the kill onto Tsu, who's running under his tower. But lo and behold, there's more blue team members there. Mitmok, legendary <laughs> eleven and zero on the kindred. So and uh, production pointed it out. There's an Axiom Verge here. If I, that's the correct name for it. On the kindred, 
Which means. <laughs> Actually, Ark, thank you. Yeah, Ark, okay, so, Ark. Good luck this. killing oh, no, that gosh darn kindred. Oh, no. Dead. The perfect game is ruined, but they're still gonna kill everybody, but it's walk jobs. It's drifted on by. Lucian grabs one with the deadly flourish. And it's gonna be a double kill from walk job, and. They finally gave over a kill. It's sad. We're not going to get the perfect game to end off a series. Instead, uh, oh, getting a tier 2 mid lane turret at 16 minutes in with a 14,000 gold lead. Possibly uh, for another kill. Yep, Sue is dead again. Really likes the color gray today. As Universal is, uh, also dead. Already one third off cooldown. <laughs> Walk down the middle lane. Just sort of yep, they are uh, they are attempting to defend the mid lane inhibitor turret. See that tree over there, possibly looking for some type of command sweep. Instead, yeah, though, think... not too much going on. Dragon up here in one minute's time, so that's probably the next look here for Mitmox team. I would be incredibly surprised if this uh, game went to Dragon Soul. Uh, <laughs> I think. At this stage of the game, Mitmox team can pretty much just five man mid and walk at the Nexus, and they would be able to win that. Well, oh, and Block Job's done a really good job itemizing. He has successfully identified the primary damage threat profile coming at him from the enemy team, and has built fantastic armor items. Not only that, but they have big brained, made sure that they got the Mountain Soul Dragon, the only one in the game, mind you. <laughs> or, sorry, the Mountain Dragon. Therefore, this is going to be one tanky slam. <laughs> And yeah, honestly, he could probably just tank a turret as they take it if he wants. Yeah, I mean, Money Killer is. Yeah, I, this when, when you get to this 15k gold lead, play by play isn't really a thing. We're just like, oh, they found him. He is uh, he he is dead. They the got the TC. They're, they're gonna they donate their, to let the. They're gonna <laughs> donate to their poor 80 carry who still can't kill this guy. <laughs> uh, so the play by play at this stage, I think, should be uh, oh, by Universal. Cards going down yeah, that red health bar is no longer on summoner's rift all right also worth noting by the way every single game has been a hex dragon soul so yes Woof. That is a, the riot <laughs> spot diversity away there game from play. uh from there got ulti money killer stains oh, away no. not gonna attempt fate anymore but mocha came very very low should really heal up off q if he wants to but not gonna take the risk of the shutdown as Quick, there's the, the hex gate, gate and Pop on back to Wolves, can go click the dragon if they so choose. Uh, Baron up in 113, and once that's up, that is pretty much going to be the end of the game. It is 27 kills to one with a 16,000 gold lead at 18 minutes. Uh, well, we said it would be interesting. I, I mean... It's, it's interesting. interesting. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's definitely a an interesting series for a lot of this stuff. Uh, we appear to have some connection issues and are not pausing the game, which is I mean, a little strange, I, but honestly, yeah, it probably pause. doesn't matter. Kindred sure threatening to triple pause. the CS of the enemy jungler by the end of the game. Looking uh, forward to it, but soon, just looking for another gray screen as he just runs it though in a straight line without ultimate or ghost. Maybe maybe you needed to think a few hoof hoof trots ahead there. Uh, I think, as Hecarim, if you have E up, you uh, you press it and you right click. Uh, money killer staying away once again from Mitmok, who decided he wanted this wave. And we, it looks like we're setting up for the final push. We got Camille split push in top side as the base is under siege. Uh, Draven has yet to reconnect from the game. Uh, uh, West Wi-Fi is really bad, so this is true. Rohan it is, is, it is it is not although it might look bad it's uh more than likely honest to god not a rage quit it's probably just no, bad no, no. internet I, I it is not a rage quit he plays uh, in a uh, wearing comments as well yep oh my gosh really <laughs> that's well, I, be... I don't know if he's playing in it right now but I know oh he she has wrote it. for this one yeah that is uh possibly i don't have this class. yeah the fastest penn state grand finals I think even faster than the two-game grand finals we had last fall, as it is a clean 3-0 stomp of a victory for Mitmox team.
And the blue number two shall take the number one for the season as they are your PSU LCS Fall 2021 champion. Now, was Mitmok the MVP of those games? Apto and uh, Mitmok, obviously, both incredible players. Uh, but I'm willing to call the 14 0 Kindred the MVP. Well, the third game for sure. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the third I mean, it's. The, I think the first I'll say game the quote the again. Role. It's a god. It's a god amongst men. It's just when you're up that far in gold and you know what you're doing. It's just the game is a, the game is all but done. Well, you know how we were saying how it's not like Hecarim seems to break that thing of you know you can have speed, durability, or power, and you know because if you have gold, can do all. Well, there's I'm a, there's more a, about the player. I'm thinking more about a, the player. A, Sorry, a, I'm not calling that out, but the player. Mitmok seems to break that too. It's like he seems to have four mains, but you can't one trick four champions. That's not fair. <laughs> but he does it. He somehow does it. Is he a pony? Like every every, I, every, pro, every pro or amateur player just sighing like, I'm, <laughs> we've lowered our standards enough where four champions is a consistent champion pool. Very well, good. I have two, so that's double mine. I'm not saying I'm any better, but <laughs> we can expect people to play four champions and not be oddities. We can expect four champions, but it just feels like no matter what you do, this guy comes in and, you know, delivers <laughs> to a yeah. level that I would expect for, again, like a one trick. Absolutely. Maybe. But yeah, I mean, not too much to say. Just the better team certainly won today. Uh, it was not a close affair, as I think total game time, we maybe had... I'm doing the quick math in my head right here. Hour 10. Total game time, yeah, probably probably like an hour. Oh yeah, and Mitmok <laughs> is also back-to-back -back PSU LCS champions. Thank you, production. Uh, as he won in spring 2021. Uh, on Team Miku? <laughs> I think that's what I know. I'm trying to remember what I call. I'm trying to remember what our team was called. I'm pretty sure it was Team Miku. There we go. Do we have so, any um anybody coming in for an interview or? Yeah. We can see if we have if we have anyone who wants to come in for interviews. I'm not really sure, honestly. I don't have many questions about this one. I think we're uh. Yeah, that's fair. Well, we're pretty cut and dry on how that one. How does it feel to have ten thousand k gold leads or ten k <laughs> gold leads? Did it feel great to have seven stacks as Kindred at fifteen minutes? <laughs> yeah. Oh, All yes. Right. There you guys go. You get we your interview our, for finals. We have our deep questions prepared. <laughs> oh. Well, I have enough time to do my homework now that I was planning on just not doing. That's all right. Ah, uh, we have to move to the low bit rate server. Unfortunate. No. My voice now sounds worse. Uh, it probably doesn't sound any different on stream, to be honest, but Absolutely uh, we're just no waiting difference. on getting... <laughs> we're waiting on getting Mitch in here. I know what the problem is, by the way. What was that? Look who's here. Oh. Hello, okay, Mitch. Hello, How's it going, oh, my up. guy? Congratulations Good on the night, fastest guys. best of five series in PSU LCS history. <laughs> Thank that you. That was, Thank uh... You. means a lot. Uh, I, I did not realize I was coming on to cast a speed run. That was a good good team performance. Everyone uh, everyone played pretty well. And yeah. Pretty happy to get it done, for sure. Uh, two for two, by the way. Two for two. Very well done, <laughs> sir. Okay. Yeah. I'll let my associates here go off with the questions because I'll be quite honest. Uh, I don't got much to ask. I had eyeballs for those three games. I saw the better <laughs> team, and uh, I'm okay. That series is really good. The, that means that was a good one, but I don't know. This one was a little more more lopsided, to say the least. Yeah. Again, better team. Certainly, the victors on the day. Mm -hmm. Not a uh, contested. Now, I do have a question about jungle pathing. I know it's everyone's favorite topic, uh, especially yeah. all the laners. Uh, why go for the red into Raptors into Gromp rather than the standard uh, red, blue buff, Gromp, three camp? Oh, wow. I think it, I'm pretty sure it's faster. 
Like that's the I don't know. I just saw like this some like Korean dudes are just doing it, so I just copied them. I, I don't I don't know why. <laughs> like I like Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's like a few seconds faster. And then it makes it easier to like reverse clear. But mm-hmm. I don't know, it's just kinda of something I do is it gives level three and gets like to do the tier two grout faster. But... Well, copying yeah. Koreans, I don't know. That's that's all I do. Yeah, yeah, it's... exactly. It works sometimes, right? Yeah. It definitely seemed fast. You definitely caught the Camille off guard that third game with that. Right, game yeah. Top. She wasn't seeing you coming at all. The level two yeah. timing without hook shot is uh, Ex- exactly. Yeah, yeah. I-, I asked my uh, my top laner if if she had Ian when he said no. I just I just won immediately, especially without having flash. And then uh, I don't know, last game was kind of sad. I'm gonna be honest. That was a that was a rough. One. <laughs> I, I felt a, I felt a little bad at some points now, but you know what? Like I just wanted to test out Axiom Arc and this preseason testing a little. So. <laughs> Love it we testing did see in grand finals. How did you yeah, like yeah. it then? How did the test go in the one oh, game sample size? Get, you had? No, I think I, th- I think it went, think went great. <laughs> uh, I actually don't think it's that good, but yeah, the stats seem knows? a little odd for a kindred. But I mean, that ultimate is pretty powerful, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, some people go like uh, collector still. I guess it gives the thality, but none of the crit or like most of the AT. But then you have the alt reduction, so. Maybe it'll be a build. I, I doubt it, though. Uh, now, out of no, personal no. curiosity, because I love this combo, was Tarek ever on the board for your game three, especially since you had the Kindred first picked? Tarek? Yes. No, we never we never really thought about playing it. I actually thought they were going to play it um, in game two when we saw the Yi. Like, I thought they were trying to funnel for a second. Um, no, like, our support's... Uh, is Galio is really good, so we just kind of picked comfort for sure. We felt like we had the uh, the better draft in that game. Yeah, I have to agree, and it definitely showed up there on the on the board. Yeah. So well, Tarek would have been a good pick, though. They, they wouldn't have been able to kill us. I mean, they pretty much did it already. But I mean, you know, yeah, that must have been a really happy time to see a Scion pick and then the enemy team round out with full physical damage. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I don't know. Well, cool, man. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah thank man. you. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a little, it's a little like, well anticlimactic, you know. honestly. Yeah. Like, it's like... I mean, you've had a heck of a season absolutely com- stomping the regular season. Most of your losses, and the only reason you were in second place for your division, just off of forfeit games. Four games yeah, lost yeah. forfeits. Yeah, we had some some communication issues for sure. Some weeks. Yeah, I mean, you know what? And at the end of the day, we got the job done, so... I say definitely uh, showed up as the number one for the year. Again, stellar performance all season. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can count on the number of losses your guys' team had for all of it, including playoffs, on one hand. So, mm-hmm. congratulations, man! It was well earned, well fought, and thank you for coming on. Yeah, yeah th- thanks for having me, guys. I appreciate yep. it. Um, congratulations. Going, going, going for three in the spring. We'll see. Hey, <laughs> go for it. Hey, yeah. all right. I'll see you guys. Goodbye. You. Yep. All righty. Well, there is your interview again. Not too much to talk about after those games. A definitive victory for Mitmok's team in the PSU LCS Fall 2021 fa- PSU LCS Finals. Uh, that's all we have for our season, obviously, yeah. as the finals are now over. Congratulations to all teams who participated. Uh, in this year, we had a record-setting year for teams. 24 teams sign up, which is absolutely ridiculous. Again, thank you to everyone who made this happen, got the scheduling done for all these different games, dealt with the Super Weeks, all that good stuff. Uh, we all enjoy playing it. I enjoy casting it. It's, it is a blast to do so. Thanks to, to all of you guys out there who participate uh, in the Intramural League. It is certainly a blast to be around but that is pretty much it for what we have here in terms of PSU LCS content for the semester so signing off one last time I'm Infamous Trash joined here by Han Solo and Next Radio and we will catch you guys back for more PSU LCS action back in the spring until then we'll catch you guys next time on the Rift goodbye <laughs>